Hey, Strictly Patrick here. This is a very special interview that I got to have with uh, Gigi Evans. And we kind of sit down, we talked over some stuff about his history online, uh, specifically his history with Mr. Sen. Hopefully you enjoy. And if you do, please uh, like, share, comment, subscribe if you feel so obliged. Uh, I hope you enjoy this and hope you have a great day. How did you uh, first get interested in YouTube commentary kind of in general, or if there was any in particular YouTubers that you found that you liked? Um, what started me uh, in YouTube commentary is kind of like a mixed bag because I actually started out in the atheist community uh, back with like the drunken peasants and whatnot. Okay. Then Gamergate happened, and what evolved out of that was like internet blood sports and commentary mixing together. Yep. So right around the time when Tommy C was having his uh, little tiff with Medicare is when I got introduced in full to the commentary community. So that'd be like 2017, 2018, when the Crouton T situation blew up. Yep. Yeah, th that's basically when I entered the commentary community. Okay. So you watched the old Drunken Peasants back before uh, uh, Billy the Fridge was on there and everything. Yeah, like right around episode two or three is when I joined on. Oh, jeez. Yeah, <laughs> the great, the the great philosophical debates of the drunken peasants versus Brett Keen and Gore TV Radio. <laughs> They're still going on about Brett Keen, <laughs> dude. It, it is like one of the greatest, like you know, campfire stories for the internet is how Brett Keen like switches religions between like, <laughs> it's like, I'm an atheist. And like, now I'm a Christian. Now yeah. I'm a gourd believer. <laughs> <laughs> there was even, uh, I don't know. I'm sure you, if you watch drunken peasants, you've seen it. There was like a woman that kind of was like a spinoff from him. And then eventually like, she like stopped like following him for some reason or another. And like actually filmed like, a uh, uh, I, I, like a pre-recorded interview for the drunken peasants even um that's kind of hard to remember i remember like only a few like women that they had ever like interacted with this would have been about, and one of them was oh god this would have been about like somewhere between episode like 1050 and 1100 <laughs> uh well it can't be the same woman i'm thinking of that was with like g-man <laughs> no 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 <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was like so funny and then there's like um there was that one guy that would do like the motherfucking operas he uh <laughs> he, he was mimicking like one of those uh creationists but oh, he's like really insane oh god <laughs> I know those that's... are some good times back then <laughs> i know this is how they were how i got introduced to uh uh jared uh oh god jared genesis yeah Alpha Genesis. Yep. <laughs> and he's a trip of a story, let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, if you want to talk about, like, covering lol cows, like, uh, Drunken Peasants, like, cornered the market on it the first time around. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, they've had some real good ones. I actually watched... I mean, Church of Gale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gale, that's who it was. She was actually, yeah. like, aligned yeah. with uh, with uh, Brett Keen for a while. Okay, I was thinking that too. It was like Church of Gale is the only crazy Christian I knew of. And then she's got like that whole, um, what is his name? Brett Steiner, like, yep. of uh, yep. affection. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she's got like 40 husbands. One of them is like Vladimir Putin and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, and wasn't she the one that had the, like the weird spaceship stuff too? Yeah, the, the Church of Gale was the name of the spaceship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, there's some fucking great people out there. <laughs> but yeah, it's like over a thousand episodes with TJ, Ben, and Scotty, and Paul Zigo. It's just like, that was like the fucking heyday of like internet podcasting. Yeah, I, I, it, I mean... God, I still can't believe they've been going as long as they have. And I, I will say Billy's a pretty good fit for Ben. He's he's been able to toe the eh. line. He 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 plays he plays the narcissistic role really well. And True. It, it um, fits really good in the show. 
Yeah, I, I just never really liked Billy the Fridge that much. It just seemed like, okay, we got a third fat guy in here, and they're <laughs> and two of them are beefing while the other one's just like fucking out of his mind. <laughs> And it's like, I know they're into wrestling, but they got to know when the kayfabe's got to freaking stop because yeah. it got to the point where, like, they actually threw punches. Paul got a black eye because Billy put, like, what, piss in his cup or something? Oh, or he shit. made him believe that there was. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go and watch then, some of the like, older, older ones. Oh, man. Yeah. And then, like, the fallout uh, during, uh, what was it, 2018? Yep. When the, when. They finally left, and TJ, Scotty, and Paul made, uh, uh, what was it, deep a fat to fried? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one kind of fell on, it fell off real quick, like, after episode 30, but they were still trying to do, like, the crazy cults and religious angle. Yeah. It just got a bit tiring, but the uh, kayfabe between Billy and Paul Zigo was just, like, it was so dumb. It seemed like <laughs> it was ruining the show. But what... But the one big mystery that ended the show was a stream that was on Twitch, TJ getting yelled at by Ben, and it involved something of them looking at a dildo on screen. <laughs> That's what I vaguely remember of the falling out of the Drunken Peasants original cast. Oh, shit. Ben must have been one of his moods. He's been pretty chill since he's done the microdosing. Yeah, I mean, he was he was asleep. He oh. wakes up to, to like messages. This is what I remember. <laughs> he wakes up to messages telling him like, "Oh my God, TJ did something fucking crazy on the show. You got to go see." And then he sees like he sees the fucking dildo on screen. He's like, "Dude, that's against TOS or something." <laughs> and the vod got completely deleted and it's lost to history. And then oh. they all had to have like the sad like. Uh, you know, videos of them telling their side of the tale and everything, and then they split ways. Oh. And it just, like, it fucking killed everything. Yeah, I... The only thing that's gotten me interested, in, and one of the best stories that I still... I want to kind of almost interview Billy at some point about, is have you ever seen or ever heard the Keem uh, birthday party story with him? The uh, Keem birthday party story? Yeah, Keem star for his 40th um... birthday. No, I have not. There's, I'll try and find it and I'll send it over to you, but there's a hilarious story where uh, Billy the Fridge is stuck with Leafy. And oh god, <laughs> there's this whole thing like they're going to like drugs places and stuff like that. And like uh, Leafy's high out of his mind and they're like lost in Las Vegas and just it's fucked up and funny. And like, this the whole premise was like leafy was supposed to be there and i guess he lives in like i don't know like eight nine hours away like relatively within driving distance and it takes him like 12 hours to even get there so mm -hmm. <laughs> it starts out pretty crazy and when he gets there like he's wired like he's either been popping zannies or something and it just goes downhill from there they hit somebody at some point like like physically hit somebody with a vehicle yeah <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, to, basically after like the drinking after the drunken peasants like fell out, I was like branching out into different communities. I mean, I was already in like the Fallout community, oh. uh, the car community, and whatnot. But a lot of these had like Discord groups, and I had created an account. I forget for which group I was trying to join in with, and I never used it until like until 2021. Okay. <laughs> So I created it in like 2016 and I never used it until 2021 okay. fully like I am now. Yeah. And I thought about uh, just going and joining up with like the SFTP crew, because like I said, Tommy and the Kraut and T situation with Medicare yep. was the thing that got me pulling more towards their content. And it just seemed like it was really dumb. The thing that solidified it for me was when the Onision shit happened. Okay. Because Onision, the Drunken Peasants, and Repsion all have like this weird little mishmash of different events happening where okay. TJ uh, was, I think it was Onision who wanted to debate TJ and he put up a bunch of stipulations and it didn't go anywhere. And then having Repsion on with the Drunken Peasants and just going through Gamergate and all the other shit, it just like, it melted. It was like there was a lot of cross traffic. Okay. 
So when Chris Hansen goes and knocks on Onision's door, <laughs> it's like that was the point where I was like, okay, I'm sticking with the commentary community because it's fucking hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Like I could get a lot of mileage and be kept up on like what the weird wild what and what the fuck was going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, However, that was also like the year it turned into pedophile accusations. Pedophile, 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 just left and right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean Anisiana was kind of the tip of the iceberg for that. And then you even with that group that you're talking about, the Maya situation that came after that, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, there's so much there. <laughs> but yeah, it's like being in the blood sports crowd, I was following Medicare, Sargon, okay. Ralph, and a few others. So they also had like their overlaps with different people within the community, like Augie and whatnot. I was going to say, so you probably were familiar with Augie and uh, maybe Flamenco a little yeah. bit. And, yeah, you know, Worski, everything. Yeah, it's Worski. just... I, I just wasn't, like, caught up with all the lore at the time, nor was I really invested in, like, you know, just, so like, maining their content. I was just, like, going through, picking different videos from these guys okay. and just watching them. Okay. So, wh- and go ahead. The Anusian part was, like, the first turning point that got me hooked. Um, then, like, a year and a half after that, you know, when COVID and lockdowns happened, I was more or less turning more and more towards YouTube, not just because of the lockdowns, but because of a IRL situation with my sister and her litany of health issues. Okay. Basically, like, crippled a lot of my, uh, I guess you could say, IRL social interactions. That's understandable. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I mean, being, like, a younger brother taking care of an older sibling who, you know, has got, like, a handful of years, it's just, like... It's a fucking drain, both, you know, mentally, and socially, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and financially. Yeah. I had to give up a, f- I had to give up a few vehicles. Oh so. man, well, not yeah, that, so... not that the YouTube crowd is really going to care about what kind of vehicles are you into. I care. I come from this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly, uh, JDM. Okay. Uh, not like early '90s or even late '90s, but Specifically, the late '80s and early '70s JDM. Okay, so like Mark III Supras and stuff like that. Yeah, the Skyline GT 2000. Okay. Yeah, th- those kinds of cars were like what looked good as far as like as close to muscle cars in America looked like. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. And I, I started out with muscle cars because my dad he owns like a '67 Pontiac GTO. Oh, okay. Like one of. Yeah, like the first cars that were considered muscle cars, he yep. has, he still has it to this day, and it's like, it's fast. I've driven it a few times, but yeah, I've got one that scares the shit out of me, but I love it to death. <laughs> <laughs> but the kind of racing I was into was like, uh, uh, drag racing and Formula Drift. Okay. And I would go out with a few buddies like once every few weeks, and we would. Go to a local track, spin our tires, get sideways, and do, you know, all the crazy shit. Yep. Putting it into the corners as close as we could, drift missling, everything. And for the drag racing scene, uh, it's like we couldn't afford the cars we wanted, so we had to get creative with our builds. (laughs) And um, this is where I ended up coming up with a few different build ideas. One was with a 98 Buick Regal GS. Ooh, okay. Yeah, with the V6, uh, 3,800, yep, 3. I believe 8, it is. Yep, yep. Yeah, and with a bigger supercharger on it. However, you take that motor out and you put it into a Grand Prix with a sturdier body, and you pretty much have, like, you know, a track missile. Nice, okay. But we would just we would just hang out, do that, do a few runs, and, like, go to car meets and one. Okay. That's mainly what it was. Like, there were some competitions we'd enter. Some of us won, some of us lost. But far from that, it got me into like welding and fabrication. Okay. Awesome, man. Yeah, I've always wanted to learn that side of it. I know the more of the mechanical side of things. So I've I've built a lot of things and broken a lot of things. And I now have things like a, a 74 Volkswagen Beetle for my wife that's torn literally to pieces sitting in storage. Oh, man. <laughs> 
So, uh, what made you take the steps from, uh, going back to the YouTube stuff, what made you take the steps going from being like an audience member to wanting to be more involved in being like, I, I don't know, maybe within discords or, you know, actually talking, whatever. Um, that would have been right around the time when I found crows of judgment, which okay. would have been the, you know, the day that lives in infamy and Christery. Um, <laughs> When he gets arrested for blanket his mom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that it's like that was the day I was searching around trying to find all the fucking information I could because I was already interested in Christian. Okay. Um, looking into it because it was just such a wild freaking story. I found one of Crow's streams uh, while it was still live and he was going over it, and funny enough, Sin was in there. Okay. So, so I found both Crow and Sin at the same time okay and i was basically in the chat making jokes and they were pulling them up and having a good time with it like you want to catch my attention real quick you end up laughing at one of my jokes like <laughs> then i pour <laughs> then i pour it on and i keep making more and more jokes i don't blame you there that's that's the best way i feel like because <laughs> <laughs> i mean at the time it's like I'm dealing with real world shit where it's like dying family member having to give up a lot of shit. So dark comedy or just comedy in general was my only like way out. It was an escape. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So if I could vibe with someone who's, you know, laughing at my jokes left, right and center, like I knew I've got like, it's just like the feedback. Like it made me feel better inside. That's awesome. So, uh, so so you after them, that i was gonna say you found them both at the same time mm -hmm. oh go ahead i apologize uh, no go ahead you were gonna lead with something else there uh i was gonna say so you found them both at the same time uh where where i guess in the timeline was this uh i, I don't know really how long sen was in and around the crows uh that's one thing i didn't really talk with him about so i don't know how much history he has with them if he was only around for a short time before all the shit broke loose the first time um you mean first time or the second time as of as of late? Uh the first time. The very, very first time. Okay. He wasn't necessarily with them. He was more like an adversary um towards Crow specifically. Okay. Um because he, Sin was friends with Dean for, for a period of time along with all the other Kiwi farmers who exposed him at the end. Okay. Um I know the one thing that Crow didn't like about sin was because sin called him like the sand n word <laughs> and that was because well yeah he does but <laughs> <laughs> but as far as i know the situation from what i've heard from both parties it's that it happened during the whole weeb wars saga which i didn't like partake but i knew it was going on at the time okay and he ended up, or they ended up, like, bickering over certain things. And I think it had to deal with, like, Nick Ricada, weirdly <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because this is the time when they were, uh, I guess, Held and crew were trying to put Dean up as, like, a litigator against Nick in the case. And whether or not the GoFundMe was a scam. Okay. And I think it was... I think that's what got like Crow pissed off because he knew like how much of an idiot his little brother was. And he went at Sin for like either encouraging or just like being around him in the first place. And Sin got peeved off and just called, you know, Crow the, the Sand N word <laughs> uh, because he was just like annoyed. And Sin does, does get like that from time to time, I know from like personal experience. So I could see that being the most logical play-by-play -play of what happened. Okay. I, I might not be 100% on the details because I was only handed, I was only given like secondhand information. Okay. As well as like only a couple of primary sources, that being Crow and Sin. And Crow's memory can be a bit spotty and Sin's could be a bit judgmental. <laughs> That's a fair way to put it, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be as fair as possible on this, so. Um, let's see. So, I guess uh 
prior to the stream this year, so the I guess it would be the second Crows of Judgment stream, technically it's like the third one, I think, because there was a little bit of an expose with him with a, a girl, wasn't there? Um, Which one? Um, so I, I thought that uh, Sin maybe had a little bit of an expose that happened before the major catfish, um, where he was involved with another woman and something happened. I, I'd have to go back to my son's stream to actually remember for sure, but I think he talked about that. I didn't know if you do any about that by chance. The only real expose I could think of was with the whole setup about uh, him selling DMs. As okay. far as as far as another event involving a woman before the uh, uh, the catfish incident happened was what ended up sullying the uh, relationship between him and Dean, okay. which was the I I think it was this one chick named Karen who Dean was writing like really creepy poetry to, trying to get like you know, in her pants and everything. <laughs> and it's like the, one of the lines that everyone in the group used to joke about is like, whenever someone was writing something cringe and it was like a love letter, someone would pipe up and say, it's like, I will kiss you under the milky twilight and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, it, it's so cringy. And it's like, it's like it's almost like grade school level poetry, I guess you could say, but <laughs> like elementary school. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's so childish, but at the same time, he's trying so hard. Like he even sent like you know like fucking nude photos of himself to this chick and everything. <laughs> uh, from what I remember. <laughs> oh man. And like Sin ends up like sweeping her off her feet, and Dean gets insanely fucking jealous. Okay, yeah, that is the situation that I'm thinking of. So yeah, there was that situation, then the uh, then the catfish situation, and their stream exposing him, and then the second stream that happened this year. So between those two uh, streams, between the first one and the second one of the catfish stuff, what did you know of the whole story involving Sen? Okay, so the first time I had heard anything about it happen at the end of a Tommy C stream. Now I didn't get like the full details. All it just, all that happened was that it had to deal with like the pyrocynical situation. Tommy has sin, like uh, sin calls into the, like the SFTP server. And I guess sin is either drunk or high. And he's just like making no sense. And at the time I didn't even know it was sin. <laughs> it was just, like, it was just some random person coming in, and Tommy's just, like, screaming at the top of his lungs, calling him a fucking idiot, and saying, yeet us to lead us, and other shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it basically hanging up on him and setting off a nuke like he usually does. <laughs> <laughs> and then Matt Pitt comes in and says, like, oh, there was, like, the story of him getting catfished or something, and... It's like I didn't put two and two together then. It was only after I like I met Sin on Crow Stream. That's when it like clicked. Okay. However, I didn't see like any of the information. I wasn't around for when it happened. I was only there in the aftermath. And no one was like being upfront one hundred percent about it. Okay. Okay. So you kinda actually came in, in between the two uh arcs is kind of when you got to know Sin. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I know, um, in regards to like, okay, so before the second stream that happened on the crows exposing him for ca being catfished, uh, stream, you had made a couple of videos. Um, mm -hmm. the first one or one of the two that I kind of noticed was, uh, the one about the DMS on discord. Can you maybe explain a little bit more about that? Um, which one is it? The uh, a measured response to Lucky Phil? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, yeah, the Lucky Phil one. This is this plays in part to like when I got really involved in Discord and with the story and with the defense of sin because Lucky Phil for a long time 
was going at Sin and anyone tied to him, including Fro, over the Maya shit with Steve. Okay. Um, I don't know what really kicked it off. All I know is that Lucky Phil got caught telling a bald face lie. Fro got really upset on a stream, and then Lucky Phil relented and admitted it was wrong. Then, like, not just like a week later, he comes back and is like fighting with Sin and everything. Running with the logs, the whole nine yards. This is when I'm like first introduced with the evidence that was produ- produced or that was being put against Sim. Okay. And I had no frame of reference, no bearing. Uh, I was already in DMs with Sin on the account that he uses to this day. Okay. So I thought, yeah, it probably was someone else. I mean, it's not out of the realms of possibility for people to have multiple accounts. It's just that when I was presented with an argument that this was sin, it's like, where's the evidence? Like, where's the dual proof? Yeah. Like, do you have another set of DMs where it shows him, uh, you know, like identifying himself in multiple ways? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, during that time, we were also like, we had multiple different arguments, or like, there were different arguments being made in defense of sin by both Aura, Steve, Kayla, Crow, even Toy Bounty Hunters to a degree, wow. which is like one of them. And this is the one where it plays into the video I made against Lucky Phil was like, anyone could name their account sin. Anyone can go by the name of sin on Discord. You have to have like matching proofs. So that was like one of the main arguments that Sin would repeat, that Aura would repeat, that all of them would repeat. Okay. And I went along with it because, yeah, it makes sense because this is being alleged. At the time, I didn't even know Sin had admitted to it. Okay. That only came out, like, later in my research. However, given how everyone was on the same page of denial, 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 I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't true. And Sin just admitted something under either duress or was blackmailed or what have you. Yeah. I didn't know the specifics until like way later. Okay. So what happened afterwards, Phil just wouldn't relent. So we went on the attack against him about how him and his friend librarian impersonated a cop to intimidate Colton when uh, the Maya and Repsigon shit was going off the rails where she supposedly had like, uh, someone passing around photos of her when she was underage and she was naked, so okay. child porn of Maya. Yeah. And Phil would record calls. He would also gather information and pretty much you know, do all the scummy shit that a doctor would do. Docs intimidation, try to silence people. I don't know if he's still doing it to this day, but he seems like he's mellowed out and like fucked off for most part. <laughs> Ironically, yeah, but, I had a run-in with him not too long ago. Yeah, <laughs> but we were basically like fighting with him, librarian, and all the other stooges in between. I thought about making a funny video because Phil was just going with, see, it says Sin6240, this was your account, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he's not listening to any of the arguments. So I might as well joke with this guy. <laughs> so I created a video where I have pictures of him, Dean, and a few other people who are also like having a go. Uh, one of them is White Silverback, a.k.a. Ross. I mean, we've all, like, apologized and made up for the fucking shit we threw at each other. So it's like water under the bridge. Okay. Uh, but during the time, we were, like, really going at each other. And I thought it'd be funny to make a joke video where it shows, like, look, you're not, not actually proving your case. You're just saying, it says, Sin6240, this is him. This was him at the time. And it's like... It could be anyone at any time. It could be this new account. <laughs> like, that was the whole idea behind it. Okay. I may not have, like, presented it in the best way, but I tried to make it as, like, as much of a joke as possible, as humanly possible with what I could do. Okay. Because I saw, like, what Lucky Phil was arguing was just, like, a fucking joke as far as evidence was concerned. All right. But uh, it seems like you have a fair amount of technical ability. Like, do you have, like, any background with technic, uh, any technical background uh, that would lead you to kind of maybe know how to do some of this stuff more so than, say, the average person? Um, if by technical background you mean degrees, no. 
I, I was just gonna say, even like, uh, even like, I I would say degrees are just a piece of paper when it comes to anything in the IT form. Yeah, but it's like form. proper training. Okay. It, it, like it's proper training and whatnot. Like, no, I don't have any of that. Okay. Mine is. Mostly like what I get up to in my spare time, what I choose to look into, and what I discover on my own. Okay. I got to tell you, when it came to faking those DMs between Phil and Ross for the Sin video, I was supposed to make. Yeah. That ultimately never finished. Um, that was like a mess of trial and error trying to get it right. Okay. Because, I mean, a lot of people will say like, oh, that's a really good Photoshop job. And it's like, nope, it's not. It's just a matter of like knowing which avenues to pursue in order to make it look as legit as humanly possible yeah. as far as code is concerned. Because um, the whole setup to it was me and another person uh, doctored up our accounts to look like the two in the video there. Okay. We did, we did a bunch of blank entries, like, you know, dot, 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 enter. And just kept like messaging back and forth while we were in a voice call. Okay. And like in order to get hyperlinks and pictures to go back and forth and be in the logs without being broken, we had to give each other direction on like which message to insert it, whatnot. Then afterwards, when I have like a bunch of blank entries, I could go into the code, find the specific area with um, uh, the program I used was Notepad++. Okay. Um, which is like a, a programming uh, yep. bit of software if yep. you're just using HTML. And I knew where the data entries were at uh, because I was looking on it through Inspect Element, knew where to find it, and I just went in and wrote a story. Okay. Changed the dates and times, um, different inferences, proper punctuation. Hell, I could even add emojis in if I wanted to. So it, it's really just knowing where to look and knowing what you want to put in. It's very rudimentary. However, if you were going to present it as a technical document, that's where the problems come in, which is what I was planning on like presenting as evidence of sin's innocence was like the, te the technical mishaps and feasibility of someone being able to fake this. Okay. And it had to deal with the same thing that would have convicted him or did convict him of it. So <laughs> it's, okay. uh, it's the, uh, 18 digit serial ID number or the snowflake ID. Okay. So and that's when like I was a, looking at that. Is that like a hard coded, like yes, unchangeable that, piece as, of data? Yeah, it's hard coded. Uh, the snowflake ID system is there for timestamps, for internal logic and consistency for um, the different time zones, as well as personal identification numbers for uh, specific accounts. That way, no one can mimic you. Okay. Uh, it's just one of the hard, it's like one of the hard coded, post, recorded, coded portions of Discord system. Okay. The problem was like what made me believe like this was all hokey as well is because Phil got a set of the logs where everything was broken except for like image links. The PFP links were broken, you know, where it would show your profile picture next yep. to your name and everything. Yep. Those were busted, so I thought, okay. I thought someone went in and started monkeying with the code because I found if you put in someone else's 18-digit ID number into uh, where the old 18-digit ID number is at, it um, it ends up causing corruption in a reference file Okay. for the All PFP. Right. Yeah, so a reference ID for the PFP tied to one 18-digit ID. If you swap out that 18-digit ID, just fucking breaks it. Okay. So I thought some I thought there was some like actual monkey business going on. Later did I find out like it was an actual glitch where if you take logs in HTML uh format only and not download the what is it? Their, the attachments yeah. in a separate folder, it will break them. If you send that HTML download of the or export of uh, the messages through Discord system again. Okay. Apparently it really screws with it. Okay, because it doesn't probably have that ability to pull the reference, so that way it can't really verify it, so to speak. Yeah, and I like even contacted like the guy who created the Discord chat exporter because I was trying to figure out like what exactly causes this bug and whether or not he noticed that someone could like 
possibly forge documents within the system and make them seem plausible with using the glitch as an excuse. Okay. Because I thought that's what was going on. Like they took screen caps where the PFPs were, were like working properly. And then the only logs were just like those broken PFPs and people were like fucking about making it look like it was real. Okay. Yep. Then like having all the, you know, reinforcement of like, Oh, this isn't sin or you're just jelly and whatnot. And it's just like, what else was I led? What else could I have been led to think? Yeah, no, that that seems pretty logical. I mean, especially if you've been that deep into the code to know like what what's going to break it, what's going to corrupt it, and or what's yeah. going to you know pass and what a normal pass looks like versus a a uh, suspect one. Let's put it that way. Well, something that's a bit hinky. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's not a technical term, but it's just a term that a lot of technicians use hinky is like not so much a suspect but just off yep but um like it, i was even sharing like notes with uh aura kayla uh crow even in a group chat and it's like every time when i bring up or when i had positive theory as to who could have faked it not one time did these guys like say gg you're going up like you're going you're going up the wrong tree with this you're on a wild goose chase or something they would not like pump the brakes. And apparently this was right around the same time when Sin was in DMs with Aura coming up with the anti Jared defense plan. <laughs> I mean <laughs> <laughs> So I guess Aura was committed to the fucking bit so much that he was willing to lie to me, like one of the biggest contributors, one who was trying to help Sin and just was there to have fun with the guys. So I mean that says a lot about his character. Yeah, and that would burn me. I'd be so mad. Yeah, uh, it's like, <laughs> and it wasn't just Aura. It was also Kayla, John, uh, Toy Bounty Hunters, Steve even, and Crow. Like, none of them had, like, you know, the freaking decency just to tell me upright when I was clearly digging myself a hole here. Yeah, yeah. Or even be like, hey, you know, maybe don't go down that path or something, even without telling you, like, maybe telling you, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you know, like, hold up on the digging there. You know, you don't have to go excavating today, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that would have pissed me off, burning up so much time and everything doing that, too. Oh. Yeah, and this is, like, in between me, like, having, what was it, like, having to rush my sister to the hospital, like, the ER at, like, 3 in the freaking morning because she fell out of bed, and I had to travel to, like, her apartment and then to the hospital with her, and it's just, like... <laughs> I'm already running down my fucking batteries. Yeah, just you're running with... on zero, basically, just with life. Yeah, and it's like any spare time I was putting in, like, thinking I was doing something good, like trying to help out someone. Yeah. And it's like everyone was complicit. Like, I know everyone wants to put the blame on sin. It's like, no, this was a group fucking effort. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that the group fell apart, and then it became all on sin because reasons. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like, honestly, he was probably the easiest to target and a really easy W because they already had <clears throat> the first stream where they exposed him. And, I mean, that was, a an I would say, pretty successful stream for them, even back then. And then yeah, and it's an easy W it's... to just re-put all that stuff out there when everybody's already kind of looking down on Sen because of the lyric stuff going on. Yeah, and the whole thing with the... Uh... Pro, it's like he even covered the lyric shit too. Thought he was a pedophile. Was like arguing against Tipster for being a pedophile for like defending lyrics and all that shit too. It's just like there's so much fucking hypocrisy uh, within the group that I was kind of what really set in stone like which ones of the group really didn't really care and like which ones that did because I think Aura did care just for a little bit. Yeah. Crow is pretty much aloof and like. <laughs> Just about himself, really. Self-absorbed. Um, John is, like, non-confrontational. I'd say, like, the word bitch is appropriate for him. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steve, he's just... How should I put it? He's... Uh, he's just a straight-up psycho. Okay, fair. And Kayla is just, like, uh, a, a tag-along, I think, more than anything else. Okay. I was going to say, I've heard Kayla, I saw Kayla in the first stream, 
Um, I noticed that she was noticeably absent in the second one, so I didn't know how much her involvement was in the second stream. But uh, yeah, she yeah uh, she was kind of a yes woman if there is such a position. And uh, like to bring more to light to the Kayla situation, it's just like she's really nice. If you're really nice, if you're mean, she can be mean. However, when like she reinforces a story about someone, um, this is a, another like perfect example of like everyone in the group fucking lied and made us believe like crazy horseshit just to get rid of their detractors. Um, Ross, the monkey man, mm-hmm. uh, they told a fucking doozy of a story about him. Um, because we had fucking nicknames and everything, Ross the Russian, even though he's like French Canadian, just <laughs> based just based on the way how he speaks, it's like it's almost Russian, like broken English. Okay. <laughs> and he's got the shaved head, shaved head, which doesn't like you know help him out that much. Uh, but um, the story about him also ties in with the Repsion drama and uh, a person named Jack Frost. Okay. Do you know much about the Jack Frost person? I don't, honestly. Okay, this is someone who was basically someone who was like going between going after Repsion and Onision at the same time. Okay. Uh, they and they got a hold of the folder of Maya's nudes. Now, what ended up happening was is that Jack Frost got uh, was giving the folder out to just just about anyone who asked and several miners did ask. So they got them on like passing out pornography to miners. Now, whether or not it's unwittingly or not, it's still a bad look and a bad act altogether. However, um, those same, basically Jack Frost was passing out Maya's nudes to anyone who wanted them and Colton got their hands on it. And so did Ross. However, when Ross was like pointing out the fucking horse shit and uh, this was he was, I guess, slightly tied to Jack Frost at the time. Like okay. they were friendly. They just weren't friends. OK. And so when it came to having like CP on his hard drives, they were really referring to the Maya nudes. OK. And they created this fucking story about how um, Ross had CP on his hard drive, had the cops called on him. He fled his home state. And now he's been on the run ever since. Well, there are parts that are true. Um, one, he did have the cops called on him, and that was because of Danny, Steve's ex. Okay. Um, he did not flee his state, his home state or anything. He just moved. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the supposed CP on his hard drive was just a folder he downloaded from one of Steve's uh, video descriptions filled with Maya's nudes. Okay. Now, it's like there are a bunch of different places he could get it. It's just like they've told so many lies, it's hard to tell what the truth is. But Jack Frost was caught, like, passing out that folder to anyone who was asking. And several miners, including Colton at the time, came forward saying they got it from Jack Frost. Okay. And that was, like, more damning evidence to bury Ross with. Well, I went, <laughs> I went along with this story because I didn't know better. And from what I could tell, it's like, it seemed too good to be true. But at the same time, Ross was, he could be very annoying. Okay. <laughs> he, he, he was very annoying. I will admit that. <laughs> and um, I ended up going and creating like a Twitter thread called a story in four parts, parts one, two, and three, because there was like several different editions. And it was basically like the four, a story in four parts meme where you take four pictures and you tell a story. And each one of them was like, you know, Ross getting his hands on CP, cops getting called, and then like, you know, the video game Ape Escape. Yep. <laughs> and that, that was the picture I used. It's <laughs> <laughs> like this is what I mean. Like I'm a I'm I'm a fucking like comedian at heart because I like to tell a joke, even if it's a shit story and it hurts someone. It's like a joke's a joke in my mind. Yeah. I got to make people laugh. He he didn't really like take too much offense to it. However, Kayla, Aura, and uh, a few others were, as Steve included, like those tweets. Now this plays for a future part because this is when the Steve divide happened, and okay. Kayla ended up going at me for lying about Steve. And then she unwittingly goes like, 
Really? Gigi lied? What else has he been lying about? Like, I don't know. Take, <laughs> take a look at your Twitter likes. Because once I found out the truth about Ross, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> because I, like, I screen capped them like, liking the tweets where I was telling this wild-ass fucking tale about Ross. And it's just like, the hypocrisy is you know, pretty apparent there. But it really just shows how dumb Kayla can be at times. Okay. <laughs> I mean, th- there's being dumb, and then there's me being gullible to go along with it. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm still laughing at that freaking using that for the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that that. <laughs> that Ape escape. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the story was he fled his home states like ape escape. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay, so moving on, I guess, to the other side of this, and this will kind of all tie into a couple of questions later on, but, um, you also, I, I know I've seen a video that you've made, uh, ba- for, uh, Lollicon, and it kind of explained things a little more, again, it was in a joking manner, but, um, do you, uh, do you care to, like, maybe explain a little bit more on that topic and what you feel and what you feel maybe people misconstrue with that topic a lot? Um, well, there are a few nitpicks. Number one, uh, the term lollycon is, well, the term itself is being misused, not like misrepresented. It's just like a lollycon is the person that's into it, whereas lolly is the actual content that they're into. Okay. So like when people use it interchangeably, it kind of sends mixed messages to people who are in the know and just it like fucking deflates the entire situation for them, like, to be interested in it. Okay. Like, that's nitpick, like, number one. (laughs) The other thing is, is, like, given what I'd known about, like, the anime community, because I was, I guess I was a part of it, like, back during the days of Death Note, Naruto, and whatnot. Okay. Um, I got out of it after, like, I guess when I turned 22 or something. And I could see where it was already going because there was like a lot of fan service anime and it was all like, you know, sex sells and everything. Okay. And the more like I paid attention to like certain creators within the fandom, it just kept getting more and more degenerate. And then that's when the lolly, the great lolly debate like really kicked off. And it's like whether or not these are misunderstood otakus or if these are just a bunch of perverts, like finding a substitute for their actual desires. Okay. That's how it's always been presented as like to me. And I'd have to agree that there is some truth to both sides. However, one side doesn't present a danger. It's just that when you're in the online space, the one that does present a danger does need to be called out and, does need to be like dealt with severely. Okay. The only pr- the only problem is is that when you've got a bunch of the misunderstood ones coming to the defense and getting lambasted, and then you have the entire uh, like community not either backing it up one hundred percent or just going after certain people who call it out all the time. It's just it, it's like a mixed bag, and there's like no clear line, but you know there's going to be a fucking shouting match whenever it comes up. That makes sense. The one thing is, is that I do see it as degenerate, almost, I'd say, on the grounds of criminality. Okay. I mean, even if it's, like, innocent, it's just, like, knowing how the internet is and one of the oldest rules is rule 34, <laughs> nothing safe. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and and the, the whole thing is, like, the more and more it gets in popularity, either from, like, really good shows or really bad shows or just really degenerate people latching on to one character and making their own little cottage industry of it, which hello, Patreon. (laughs) Um, It it just like, it it becomes like a, what's the word? A self sustaining reaction. Okay. In which uh, it can just continually go and it could print out tons of money. And then when you have that and thrown into the mix, there are people who are willing to, turn a blind eye to the darker side of it and just encourage it or just outright defend it like Rev says these do. Yep. 
Yeah, I was gonna and say it, when when I I'd was say... looking at this with Sen, I actually looked at it from the other perspective. I found someone that was technically in all shapes and forms supposed to be an adult in a storyline, and the art itself looked like a minor. Yeah, that's another thing. It's sort of like I've seen those shows where it does that. Um, because they would come up in heated topics and whatnot. And if you had to like figure out like who's telling the truth or not, you had to watch the show. Yeah. Um, like with Dragon Maid, you know, the Dragon Lolly, uh, what's her name? Kana? Uh, the one where she's like 900 years old in Dragon yep. years. The one everyone but always it, consistently feel like uses. Yeah. Yeah, but they're like nine years old. Yep. And you've got her, I guess you could say, partner um in the show which is like a fellow classmate who's like head over heels and is having like these romantic fucking ideas of the of the two of them and it's just like what is the message that is being sent here is this like overly dramatizing young love between two people or is it like something more that the writers are trying to hint at yeah because like some of the antics that i saw from that show yeah it can be like hand waved as comedy but then you've got like the inverse where you have the kid, uh, what was his name? Sh- uh, Sota, I think. I think so. I don't know much, but I, I believe that's the name I've heard. I remember that. I remember it like as in the limerick, Sota the Shota. Because <laughs> like with Kana, there was like ravioli, ravioli, don't loo the dragon loli and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like Sota the Shota and like the fucking blonde haired, like dragon lady with the huge rack and everything and how he was just like you know fucking timid around her and everything like that shit it's like when you see it in the inverse it can also be played as comedy but at the same time it becomes apparent like you know sex comedy with kids yeah it's something that really raises a fucking eyebrow and it doesn't matter if it's like fiction or not it's just that the idea comes from an adult human (laughs) yeah and they're putting it like pen to paper or, you know, stylus to computer screen. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, it doesn't exist in a vacuum where it's completely neutral. Like these ideas come from adult human beings and they put it into show, whether it's completely innocent in their purview or not, it's hard to say. It's just that, uh, the concept of like, and this is from a literary standpoint, which can be attributed to all media, which is, uh, death of the author is birth of the reader which means no matter what the author intended for their medium to mean, it's no better, it's no better or worse than what is interpreted by the reader or the viewer of the subject. Okay. So like someone could say, Oh, it's completely innocent. It's a funny show. And it's like, man, that shit just looks straight up pedophilic. Yeah. Those can be both equally true at the same time. And I think that's the kind of dissonance and disconnect we're having we're having in this fucking debate. Oh man. And then it just comes down to like who has the more numbers? Is it the group that says it's pedophilia or the group that says like, no, leave it alone, it's fine. It's, and it's just art, yeah. Yeah, and that group ends up winning out more times than not because they have a bigger pool of, you know, <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but like fucking retards just like willing to go to bat for this shit and die on the fucking hill like tipster (laughs) that man will find a lolly hill to die on i swear you know what's funny is like in my second uh fucking video in responding to tipster about the lyric situation i told him like go find the next hill you want to die on (laughs) i'll just be here laughing (laughs) (laughs) you know that's the funny thing it's like when I when I look at a person's character or just like size them up, I'm right about like 90% of the time. There have been a few times where I've been shown up about their character. Uh, one of them was definitely with Augie. I thought he would turn into Ralph. And we had like this joke going around like the transformation will be complete and everything. I heard that. I heard that back in the day. And like I would say even when I wasn't really even a, a chatter, like back when like, I was just watching this stuff like on and off. I would hear about like, oh, he's going to be Ralph Jr. Like I heard that. Yeah, that that was me. (laughs) (laughs) I I was the originator of that idea because 
Sin and Augie were fighting each other, and I he wanted my opinion on Augie, and I was like, ah, oh, he's just Nathan Ralph Jr. And he's like, explain. <laughs> 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 and so I go, and I'm like listing off all the fucking characteristics and all the things that he does. Is shit that Ralph has either done in the past or is doing currently. Yeah, <laughs> like the same. And it's just like it's almost formulaic. However, there was just one missing piece, and that's like the pills and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is there. The short-tempered fuse, like uh, the overreactions to just little jokes. Yep. And then like having an audience, a rabid fucking audience. Yep. And just like uh, doing the same shtick too. It's like. This is RFC After Hours. This is the kill stream and shit like that. It's just like, <laughs> it's, the, it's the same presentation, same kind of energy that I'm reading off these two. I'm like, he's going to turn into Ralph one day, a fucking drunken wreck. <laughs> now I've got to wonder, <laughs> would that make Nick DiOrio Medicare? Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> technically, technically, I mean, DiOrio's in that kind of position. However... Um, I don't think he's willing to capitalize on being the next Medicare. No, I don't think so. I, mean, I don't think he wants to. I think he could be a Medicare of sorts for the next generation. I don't think you're going to get the same humor. I don't think you're going to get the same um, quips and everything that, that uh, Medicare is famous for. Yeah. And it's just like with Augie, him and Sin had a lot in common when they get mad. So it's like the shit I said about uh, Augie could be attributed to if he had any of the track record that Augie did with Ralph. True. Like, um, they they would brood, they would take snide shots, which is why I kind of gave him the idea of him being, you know, Ethan Ralph Jr. in the first place. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it wasn't just, like, my ob- observation. I knew it could be used as, like, a weapon against him. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's come full circle. Ralph's basically streaming out of the equivalent of a closet, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like Augie was also like Ralph's little like a uh, uh, what is it, circus monkey or jester in the courtroom. <laughs> and it's like I remember it was like Fireball Three, uh, night one. It was me and IBB and fucking Augie and Connor, and I was like hyping it up. I even sent like some, I guess you could say, diss videos against Augie. You know, <laughs> taking the snippet of the audio where Ralph is like. A fighting Medicare on the fucking Boulder Stream 2 with fucking Matt Jarbo, <laughs> where he's like, I, I truly love my son. And it's like, I, <laughs> and, shit. and I make it seem like he's talking about Augie. <laughs> <laughs> and Salvo, I knew he would take it and run with it. So it, it became like a little bit of a shit, like shit talking fest. And I like, I got him good with the shit. It was really funny because, uh, the reason why he is no longer with Ralph is because he had to get a new stepdaddy, and that was Keemstar. Because <laughs> there, there was like a, there was another joke. This is another joke that I made: is that Augie is basically short round from Indiana Jones because <laughs> not not because he's Asian, but because he wears a hat and does what other, does whatever older men tell him to do. Because. <laughs> When it came to Ralph, it was like Augie seeing Country Roads, and with like Keem, it's like drop out of college, Augie, and do this full time. <laughs> <laughs> because Augie ended up dropping out of college yeah. on Keem's like on Keem's idea. So I'm like, how could I not be wrong with that character assessment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so listen to the dyslexic <laughs> millionaire. <laughs> He's definitely gonna get the right path. <laughs> yeah, it's just like. It's so funny to me. It's like those days are gone and we all were having a good time with it too. <laughs> it's just that once the infighting started, that's when things went like fucking dark. Yeah. See, I was around for a lot of the infighting on their side. Um, ironically, not for like watching Tipster or Flamenco. I watched Augie and I watched uh, um, Nick a lot because that's back when Nick was before he took his like two year break. And like I even remember listening to the stream where they're like talk, they're giggling like schoolgirls because they're young kids mm-hmm. talking about how it's going to be Tipster's divorce stream and all that like the one that really broke the camel's back for Tipster I remember that stream <laughs> yeah the beginning of the fall yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man um so going on to like some history here I I, I don't know if you have any or not um 
I know that Zen has a lot of history with the farms, um, tangentially and directly. Uh, do you have any history with the farms yourself? Um, as far as I know, I may have known a few people on there. It's just, I'm not 100% certain. And uh, these people would have been back from like the Gamergate days okay. that I worked with. Okay. Um, I've known, I, I've come across paths with people who end up having their own either articles or have been mentioned in other like um, threads, like JMK and whatnot okay. and, uh, from Gamergate. It's just, I don't know if like, the, well, actually the only thing I know that of mine that's up there is a set of tweets where I correctly called out someone as being one of Flamenco's mods after <laughs> after he had been exposed. And it was the HAL 9000 dude, I think, Okay. if I remember correctly, because me and Leo were having a back and forth, and it's like, yo, that dude's like a Flamenco mod. I forgot to put former, but, you know, same idea. Yeah. He was tied to Flamenco. But um, <laughs> apparently one of the guys on there who's like, I guess you could say uh, – and Orlick's probably going to hate me for saying this, but he's almost like a, a dead ringer for Orlick as far as behavior is concerned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Orlick, but I mean, <laughs> observation. <laughs> but this is a beetle bug guy who's like a total ass kiss to HAL 9000. It's like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. It's like, I saw this and I'm like, die and laugh. And, <laughs> and, and Hal had to come in and correct him. And it's like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You had to go through that with flamenco. By the way, you don't look anything like Dick Diorio. You're a lot slimmer. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a total fucking ass kiss. <laughs> he gets mad at me for calling out his fucking, <laughs> his friend or whatever for being a flamenco mod and he just like turns into an ass kiss once he's like corrected <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's the only thing and I found it so funny and I shared it with Leia when someone sent it to me and it's just like <laughs> it's like I couldn't help myself but it's like I understand where that guy is coming from because I would be defending Sin the same way so like you know just not Different issues, same lesson. Yep, yep. Oh, man. So, uh, going on to more of the current stuff. So, after the more recent stream that the Crows did, um, did your feelings and understandings of a whole... How did your feelings and understandings of the situation with Zen change? Um, how did my feelings about the situation or just the people Um, involved? I would say probably more the people. Because probably the situation didn't change much as much as like your understanding of like with what happened in the background, kind of like we talked earlier and whatnot. Um, I would say for the situation itself, it was kind of like a weight off my shoulders. Like, okay, now I know the fucking truth, and now I know whose ass I have to fucking kick. Um, <laughs> and uh, what it did, it did change my perspective on a lot of them. Crow especially because I think he latched onto this story about sin not because it was anything like newsworthy, but rather just as a way to get back at sin for calling him the San N word. Okay, that, that, that's what I think it is because you know the whole the whole fucking catchphrase of charitability and misinformation is to me like a fucking misnomer because as far as Crow and charitability goes, is like how much money he gets from his audience. And doesn't spread the wealth with his co-hosts. Okay. Like that was one issue Sin went over with you, I think, if I remember correctly, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, there were a few other instances where, like, it did recontextualize a lot of the shit that I remember, but most of it is like I probably should have seen it by how he was dealing with other people. Okay. Because if it's because if it's on a charitability. Uh, basis, then he has no right, uh, like standing on principle when it comes to defending people of false accusations. If it's a charitability standpoint, mm -hmm. because um, <laughs> when he called me a meth head, I was like, "Crow, how many times have I like, how many times have I been on stream with you, or if I ha or I've had to like fucking like go out and do an emergency run to my sister's apartment." What meth head would be capable of doing that at three in the morning or something? Yeah, the drop of a hat. Yeah. 
And, and like to dispel the fucking like nonsense about it, this was probably said in the group chat between me, Sin, Steve, and Aura when we were dealing with the um, RE situation. Okay. In which I had joked about like what kind of things I use to stay awake. And one of them, I use the colloquial term from my area, which is trucker meth. Yeah. Now, this is the funny thing. Take a guess as to what that trucker meth was. Trucker meth. I'd have to go no dos. Close enough, but it was like stacker two energy shots. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's basically a colloquial nickname for something so benign. It's just more treated as a joke. Like, yo, I'm going into the gas station. You want some trucker meth? You know, if you got, like, someone new with the group yeah. and you wanted to fuck with their head. <laughs> like, that, that's what it was. Oh, man. <laughs> really, really, truly benign, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then there was, like, the other thing I was on, uh, which was prescribed to me by a doctor for um, the weight loss, which was, you know what Adipex is, right? I've heard of it. But don't cheap know much speed about it. is okay. Cheap speed is like another nickname for it. Okay, it's like uh, the non, uh, it's the non harmful stuff that is used to create speed. However, it suppresses appetite like a motherfucker. Like you could go a whole day without eating. Okay, just off of one thirty milligram pill. Oh damn. Okay. Yeah, and I was using it for like when I was like way overweight, and this okay. was like years ago. And it helped me drop a lot of pounds, give me a lot of energy because it still has like some of the basis of speed in it. However, it's like you only take it once for two months, then you have a three month cool down period, then they could prescribe it again because it can do damage to your heart. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, it's like one of those like very high up in the schedule. Yep. Like degree. Yep. Prescription drugs where no one else could pick it up for you but yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on a couple of those myself. That was another thing, like, I told in confidence, like, it's like, I have that, and it's like a way to keep me awake when I, back in the old days before I started, like, drinking NOS. Yeah. Which is just an energy drink. Yep. Sorry about that, they were asking me something. Off again, I've been trying to mute, but I keep forgetting I got two mics to mute, so I know I coughed a couple times, I apologize about that. (laughs) Yeah, but the whole thing is, like, basically I had where I would like share information uh, to them because I thought we were all friends. Yeah. And seeing as how like Steve was willing to work with us, I figured we'll be, we'll be mending the bridge soon enough. So it was safe enough to share like some jokes and shit, have some kicks because we were dealing with someone who was like faking their fucking death. And we're like scratching our heads. Like how the fuck is this even like happening? Like, is she dead? It's like, And it's like we were also dealing with fucking IBB being a fucking spurg for the umpteenth time. And <laughs> that's. And this is like another instance where it's like no one came out and told me, even though they had the perfect opportunity to do so, because we were in this call and we were strategizing on um, how to put up a, a front or an act for both, like, uh, the per- for, you know, what's her name? Ari's like little performance piece of being the murderer on Twitter. And shit like that. Yep. And to blindside IBB for like uh, his debate with Sin on now recording. (laughs) So it was like a dual purpose. And one of the things that was said in that call was like uh, Steve had already mentioned like the logs and shit was shit talking me in it. And Sin was like, yeah, keep doing that. That's a good idea. Like they didn't tell me it was true then. It's just like they were using that as like ammo or, like, as a suggestion to keep the appearances up. Okay. So, as late as then, they had the chance to tell me. But at the end, they didn't. Yeah. (laughs) Until this fucking stream. God, that's kind of fucked. It's like, look, I like these guys. Like, even if they were lying to my face, if they came out and told me it later, like, you know, not in such a fucking bombastic way, I could forgive it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'd still like, okay, yeah, you fucked up, but I'm not going to throw you under the bus. Yeah. We can still be friends. We can still hang out. It's just like, don't, for the love of God, pull that shit again. Yeah. But again, it's like ulterior motives. And we were actually having the bridge mended for like maybe about two weeks. And then after like that tier three episode came out where Sin was getting like uh, 
uh, Sin was getting whipped by both Steve and Aura for what he said about Steve and everything. <laughs> Steve went back to see exact like went back and looked at all of Sin's streams to see what exactly he said, and apparently he didn't like some of the shit Sin was saying, so he got mad again, and then like the bridge never got rebuilt. That's such a stupid thing. And then they tried to tie yeah, into and... the whole uh, thing with toy bounty hunters with the the kid thing that. And, and let me tell you, I know I know Sen clarified it, but I was a bitch to even figure out if that was true or not. Like, I mean, you had to be there to know if it even happened in the first place. Yeah. the The problem with their justification uh, and giving like a uh, fucking toy the honors to put Sen in his place by ha- showing his DMs with him as the evidence. Again, you could tell it was just like all choreographed and fucking yeah. like it's just it's just performance art at its worst. Yeah, it was very much a stage show. Oh yeah. However, everyone's like taking their talking points and not like evenly disp- dispersing the fucking blame, which I mean, I know a lot of people would disagree with, but look, if they were willing to lie about you in the past only to now to be Johnny come lately's with the truth <laughs> and do it in such a fucking bombastic way, then you're too dumb for this. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's just like the the whole thing with Toy, it's like I didn't say anything bad about him. I thought it was I thought it was a dumb move that what Sin did that night when he's like telling uh T J V to like have uh have him show DMs. Like in the moment it was funny. I thought it was funny. But afterwards when I saw like how it played out and I thought of everything that could possibly happen. It's like, this isn't going to end well. Like I had a gut instinct about it because the way how John was behaving afterwards where he was going into people's DMS, telling them that the stuff about sin is true. He's been lying to you and shit like that really caused a fucking nightmare. And it showed how hurt John really was just by having him being called out on whether or not he talked to delirious, not about the kid shit, yeah, but just that he was in communicado with a fucking pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's such a petty reason to just go scorched earth. But like, I mean, people will do petty stuff for whatever reason. So I get it. Yeah, because like the John Kid shit, like I mean, Redsky may have said it in the chat, but it didn't become like a point of contention until stream uh, two, when it became John versus uh, Scott. Okay. And then that's when, like, all the fucking arguments Sin was making on his own streams started to point to John being a bad father because, like, why are you defending a guy who's obviously a pedophile? Yeah. It's like, what does that say about you as a father? And then that is just, like, more fuel to the fire. Yep. Yeah, I did see some of that stuff, and that was about the only thing I could find. And I was like, well, maybe this is it. Like, you know, it's one of those, like, it didn't seem like enough, but now knowing that, yeah. Yeah, because the whole thing is, like, If it was just Steve, no one was going to war with Steve. The thing was, is that during this time, like when we were warring with Steve for the second time through, and I think it was also during the first part, I was co-hosting with Crow on his streams for Comic Crows with uh, 224 Bic. And we had some genuinely good times about it. And I didn't catch like he was paying attention to the petty squabbles or he had any like fucking clue what was going on unless we brought it to his attention. I mean, we... We definitely had some good times. It's just <laughs> Crow, he could be two-faced when he wants to. And it's like, given how he doesn't like use Discord as much and doesn't keep in contact, it's just really weird that he would do this. Like, now for, like, fucking Toy, of all things. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it was Toy's battle, and Crow inserted himself, and then Crow made himself a target. But... Yeah, like, and like sh- just the way it was going, like when I looked at it, at least from the Twitter side of the conversation, I don't know a lot about anybody involved here. It looked like well, uh, Crow was Crow already had the plan Crow, in motion. Well, Crow was losing his shit. It's like I mean, I make one little joke. It's like Crow at work, and it's like you know one of those jokes. Like yeah, it, it's like Crow at work. Crow also at work, and it's just like. He's just going on for like reply after reply after reply when he says he's at work. And I'm like, dude, are you on break and doing this or what? And it's just like, he just straights up like goes like, shut up, GG, you're a meth head. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And I'm like, I'm not even taking sides on this fucking issue. Yeah. I'm just making a joke because I'm looking at Chrome like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? This is stupid. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Yeah, and the, the thing that struck me, and I don't know if I really mentioned this with uh, Sen, like, even when I was looking through stuff, like, Crow and Sen, it might have been tension there, but they were even remotely friendly up and through December of last year. Yeah, I mean, last year it was, there There was some, like, I guess you could say, cordial moments, because it was somewhere around August of last year, if I remember correctly, when the last stream I was on with Crow and 224 Vic happened. Okay. It might have been earlier, but August seemed like the cutoff point. Okay. Because, uh, and me and Sin kind of joked about it, um, because we were wondering, like, oh, this is week three, where the fuck is Crow? And then we're, because this is, like, after he, I think he exposed the fucking, uh, gay op server just to show like all the information he had on Katie. Yes. Yeah. I think that's where it fits in the timeline. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense if I remember the timeline correctly myself. Cause there was a video um, that came out where I was watching it and uh, they took a clip from one of Crow's streams where <laughs> they, they didn't put my part in the stream where Crow's going on about like, me and my friends took us an hour to figure this out, and we were high and drunk, is what he says. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the dude in the video is like, what a fucking idiot. And you could see me in the stream because it's like, it's panning, like centering in on Crow's PFP, but mine's like in the side. But I follow up with something stupid because like, you know, I'm like, it's late at night, I'm going along with the shit. Yeah. Because I didn't know any, like, I didn't know exactly what he was saying. It was just like, yeah, you know. <laughs> but I was there and I had like the tipster PFP because we were making fun of tipster at the time too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, um, <laughs> it's what I brought that to Sin's like uh, attention is like, no way. Seriously? He's like, you're lying. It's like, nope, here it is. Time stamped and all. I was like, it, it kind of suggests that Crow fell off. <laughs> and that's why he quit streaming. I had no idea, like, it was, like, for what the real reason was. But, yeah. I mean, there was, like, one night after a stream where we had, what was it, Broly Power Maximum in the call with us. Okay. Which is, like, another, like, one of Crow's old friends. Uh, he went to his wedding the year previous. Uh, that's where you get, like, Crow in the tuxedo. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's the that's the picture that it's referencing is a uh, Raleigh's wedding, and um, we were we were joking around and we were talking about like uh, World War II comedies or comedies that involve like Nazis and everything, and one of the subjects that came up was not just Hogan's Heroes but uh, Heil Honey I'm Home. You know what that is? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a. This is a British sitcom back in the 90s um, that only had one, uh, I guess you could say, a pilot episode. Okay. It had like six recorded in all. And there have been snippets of them, and it's kind of like lost media, almost. However, the pilot episode is like some VHS recorded one from the BBC television channel. <laughs> and it's basically if Hitler and Ava Braun were like, in a sitcom, like as uh, <laughs> almost like Fred and Wilma, okay. if you will. Okay. And he's got like he's got Jewish neighbors called the Goldensteins. Um, <laughs> 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 this is when he becomes like this is like early 1930s Hitler, not before you know the war even starts, where he's like yeah. giving his crazy speeches. He just became Chancellor of Germany. And he's like, it's just like really funny because they hit every fucking beat in the first, the, the pilot episode is basically where he's invading Czechoslovakia. <laughs> and freaking <laughs> Neville Chamberlain is invited to his apartment for dinner. <laughs> and this is where like he, <laughs> and they're, they're like lampooning the whole peace in our time treaty that he yep. signed. Yep. <laughs> it, it, like a, it just basically like a fucking sitcom, and it's like really <laughs> funny. Like the writers were witty, <laughs> and uh, me and Crow like 
towards the end of the stream, we were dying laughing watching this. And, or did we watch it after? I forget when we watched it, but we were watching snippets of it. We were talking about it, how it's like so funny. And then like in Hogan's Heroes, all the Nazi soldiers were played by Jews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's where also the comedy comes in. Like they're taking a dig at them. Yep. And <laughs> cause like Colonel Klink is like a Jewish, uh, what's his, uh, his family was in the opera, I think, or if I remember correctly. And then he was like a, uh, a trained musician and theater actor himself and that's who he ends up playing as colonel plink and everything oh wow i didn't however wow yeah there's a lot to it it's really interesting but after the stream we were in a call with brawley and we were dying laughing going over the scripts because there were scripts of the show beat for beat and how it would play and we were basically doing like a fucking dress or like a dress rehearsal for uh ziggy hitler like cousin Ziggy Hitler comes to town is like the name of the episode or something. <laughs> and, and I don't know if you get the reference for Ziggy, but <laughs> he's like a complete mooch. <laughs> oh my God. I and we were going on for like, an, <laughs> yeah, we were going on for an hour, like playing the parts. Like uh, he, uh, I forget which one he'd play. Oh, he'd play the ancillary characters, and I'd be playing uh, fucking Ziggy and Adolf, like, riffing back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, one of the things is, like, Ziggy's going around stealing art pieces. You know, <laughs> and trying to sell them off. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and the golden scenes are, like, are ends up being, like, his, you know, fucking potential buyers in it. <laughs> 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 oh, and there's like some really witty writing where it's like no one's it's like no, it's like um no one's going to say that the hitlers are thieves or whatever <laughs> <laughs> even though it's just like taking like little disparate facts about the war it's like the nazis stole like fucking art and treasure yep, and whatnot yep. and it's like ziggy hitler is the embodiment as a joke <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. It's really witty writing, but it got canceled after the pilot episode because, like, I guess, I guess enough people phoned in. It's like, man, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> it's like me and Crow would have like genuine interests like that where we could laugh for hours on end, like fucking having fun and everything. Yeah. So it, it, it's like having shit like that happen, and like just having to like rethink everything it's like was any of it real or was this just all fucking opportunistic horse shit yeah yeah or how much of it was real and how much of it was you know whatever yeah yeah it's just like really freaking weird yeah that's a mind fuck god damn because yeah, i could go thinking about like the times we were having great laughs and then it's just like really i don't know yeah um so the next question I got for you is two parts because I don't know if you know. I, I believe you know some of it probably uh, just from being around Sen. But do you know about the whole situation that involved uh, Sen with Held, the Kiwi farmer? As far as I know, the situation with Held and uh, Sen was that I guess Held convinced him to admit to it or something because... Yeah. At the end of the day, like when I look at the evidence there, they're just taking Sin's word for it. Okay. So I don't know if Held actually threatened Sin. Like, I mean, that was one of the things he told me. But then again, this whole story was a lie afterwards. If I had to really think about it, I'd say Held gave him a way out to where he wouldn't put Sin's docs in it or what he thought was his docs at the time. Okay. Because apparently they failed to get accurate information about who he was because they thought he was Chris something for the longest time. Okay. And I guess he basically told like, look, I won't put your docs in there. Um, we won't put any like proof, but you have to confess to this shit being you. I think that's how it went down was the trade off. Okay. And I don't know if anything else happened 
uh, between the two. All I know is that the message between Held and JMK where he's like, there's a reason why I didn't put his like docs in there. Okay. And I think it's more or less because he felt, I don't know, it's like, dude, you fucked up big time, but here, I'm going to cut you some slack, I think is what really happened. But it still doesn't, like, excuse, like, the other shit Held did. Like, I, I mean, there say, are other stories. Do you know, it, do you know, is Held involved uh, in any way, shape, or form with, like, the original, like, how the how the chats got leaked and what the deals were made? Okay, this one is more or less, uh, well, I guess you could say that he said, he said, he said, but at the same time, it does line up fairly well because okay. the deal that was made between uh, Held and Jared was that they only got the send DMs. Like, they weren't going to take and archive all their messages with other people. Okay. However, that that was only to, in order for them to get the password and the other login information. And then they would give it back immediately afterwards once they had their, you know, their boom. Okay. I, I got even though I got to ask, like, he, what's your thoughts with them letting Jared go? I mean, it's like, regardless if they were going to get sent in it, it was like, there is a lot more to be had if they kept the account and just lied straight up to Jared's face, because I mean, they're no, they're no like uh what's the word here. They're not against lying to people yeah. straight up about certain issues. Because, like, in the original post, they say that Dean was somehow able to get this all. He was able to get the password, and Jared trusted him enough and shit like that. And it's like, no, that's not what happened, because Dean himself admitted that he didn't export the logs. Held did. And DMs was Slug. Because Slug really pushed him on, like, who got the original logs in the first place. Yeah. And Dean admitted it was Held. And when, when I was doing my own investigation into it, it just... I kept seeing, like, hints of German all over the fucking place, which is why I thought it was held, like, impersonating Sin in the logs in the first place. Okay. Because not only are the logs downloaded in, like, ger in a German time zone, if you look all the way down at the bottom in the left, you will see the time code, which is, like, the UTC yep. of where yep. it was located. And that's in Germany. <laughs> now, okay. it's, why, it's why the timestamps look so fucking wonky for when some of the uh, things that happened, happened. And I I was going through, like, different timetables to see if this is even plausible, which, I mean, guess what? It was. I mean, Held is known to be, like, a bit of a night owl, so he'd be up burning the midnight oil um, up until, like, maybe 7 in the morning in Germany time in order to message someone over in California at noon. Okay. So, yeah, there was a lot of shit that lined up. It just, it made me think, like, this could be someone else and someone who's in Germany. So I asked Sin, it was like, was there anyone from Germany involved in any of the groups? And Held's name came to the forefront. Okay. And it just became a bit of, I guess you could say in hindsight, it was now confirmation bias rather than just, like, disparate forms of information, like, lining up. Yeah. But yeah, at the you, time, I was you like, didn't I know necessarily. You were just getting yeah, hand, and, handed this information. And you're thinking it lines up, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I'm telling this to Aura in DMs. Like, I figured out who like was. I think I might have figured out who was fucking around, pretending to be Sin in those DMs. And and I showed him like the differences, and I told him like what my clues were that led me to believe that this is all a bunch of hokey nonsense um, to frame Sin. And when I t explained the code switching, he thought I was talking about Lucky Phil doing it. I was like, no, held. Because at the time, the original source of the logs was down, and they had to re-upload a new source for it. Okay. They had to get another files, uh, file share site for people to have access to it. So I was still going off of like the evidence that Phil was presenting to us, the second-hand set of DMs that went through Discord and wiped the PFPs. Okay. So that makes sense. So even with that, I could come up with like a few other theories on how he could have set it up to make it look like sin. I mean, even with working PFPs, I figured out a way how to do that. Oh wow. Yeah. And that's kind of how I did it with this uh video of okay. uh, Phil and uh White Silverback because it was 
it, it was basically like setting up an account to, to torpedo someone is what I figured out and how to make it look legit. Because once an account is deleted, uh, you could do a lot of things with setting up the evidence, like okay. getting the name on screen, like messages with or receive end of messages. Okay. It, it's all about appearance from the screenshots to make it look believable. And yeah. even on like when you open up the document into a web browser to make it look believable. Like I figured out how to do that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's like what kind of fueled me on to think like, okay, I figured this out and it's pretty, uh, it's a really low jack way of doing it too. Hmm. Like it's very, uh, it's tedious, but you don't have to do anything extravagant with the code. All it takes is a bit of like a, a bit of intimidation to get someone to change their name <laughs> for a temporary time. Yeah. That way you could change your account name yep. into theirs, download the logs switch it back and those logs are already a pristine copy that won't get updated. Okay. And that's like always the problem with it. It's like once I was able to do that a few times with se with several fucking um accounts with other people, it's like I have a proof of concept here. I could present it and it's like people can do this and they could see like I'm not full of shit here saying like I found something that could fuck with the entire story. Yep. <laughs> yeah. God, it's still because I mean, to hear you go through all of that and a whole, a whole, how how long they knew what the truth was, yeah, and it's... the fact that they couldn't just like tell you like ease up, you know what I mean? At the very least, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had already. It was like when I was scripting out the video, I had like maybe a, I want to say close to about five thousand words in. Oh wow! Like, yeah, because a lot of it I had to go into specific technical breakdowns and how shit worked and. Yep. what corresponds with which part of the logs. Yeah. And then it came down to like demonstration and editing. Like I was going to use a scene from death note to explain circular logic <laughs> because a lot of, a lot of the people that were arguing this shit were just using screenshots, not technical documents. Yeah. To prove that sin went by sin six, two forty. Yep. It's like, I'm looking for the 18 digit serial ID number, not just send six, two forty. Yeah. Cause even it's like, I, I made that even it's like, I've made that clear with a lot of people. Even before the whole, uh, the whole recent, um, crow stream didn't franchise like August, July, August of last year, put out a video. And I think he was using that same information. If I recall. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Aura fed it to him because I was the one who came up with it. Like, I, I know from documentation, from what I told Aura, it was regurgitated by franchise. Oh, that's infuriating. So not only are you going through all this work and they know the truth, but now they're passing it on to somebody else. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I mean, I suspect Aura was because Aura was passing on shit to franchise in order to have a go at Redski. Yeah. Because, like, uh, when... Fredsky was like dealing with someone trying to get his docs. He, for whatever reason, decided to op everybody by creating this account, making false accusations towards him. Okay. And freaking Aura decided to give franchise the messages to, uh, of him and Redsky where Redsky was telling him the idea. And then franchise tried to make it look like, Oh my God, Redsky's a fucking psychotic freak. It's like, when you're trying to set up bait for someone who you think is trying to dox you, it, it's just a clever way of catching them in the act. May not be the cleverest way to do it, but it's yeah. clever. Yeah. It's just like, I know Aura has a track record of doing that. And then I heard it after when I went on Huggy showing my DMs, he was bitching about me sharing those DMs. <laughs> <laughs> so oh I'm like, God. make up your fucking mind, Aura. Like, come on. Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so I guess uh, I'm trying to see which way is the best way to go here. And so I guess we touched on like some of the red ski stuff and everything else and a little bit with franchise. Um, what are your thoughts? There's one on... other red ski thing, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, so there was the whole situation uh, that was briefly mentioned. Uh, it was mentioned in my sin stream that involved red ski. And I guess it was a situation with Steve and Aura and uh it was back when uh Redsky was in a bad mindset. Um, do you know much about that and like what went on behind the scenes there? Because I know that partially also fed into things if I remember right. Yeah. Um 
a lot of it i mean there are certain things i can't go into because mm -hmm. redsky like asked me not to like specific things i can't say however from what i remember he was like drunk one night and this has like been a recurring thing over like the past few years where he'd get into like one of these depressive spells he'd drink he'd get real mad and then he would just like disconnect and like delete things and it just seemed like he was you know and it got to a point where aura and uh sin were trying to constantly like talk him down and shit. yeah the problem was is that steve was a bit of an instigator and calling him uh, you know baiter and everything yeah um when i first heard about it i was like I was wondering, like, if he was okay, because he seemed like, from what they were describing, still in that kind of mood, and I wanted to help him. I, in, in the, you know, in the call, when I was with him, when I first witnessed this, I ended up causing it to happen again, because I tripped over my words. Because okay. I was literally, I wasn't trying to probe him, I was literally trying to just, like, figure out, like, what the core reason why he was in this mood was, yeah, and yeah. maybe help him out. And um, that ended up getting recorded um, by Sin, in which he passed it to Aura. It's like, Gigi did it again. I need you to come back in and help me with this. And we all, all three of us got in the call, and we tried getting Redski to calm down. Yeah. Now, when Dev was wondering, like, what's up with Redski, um, we gave her, like, a portion of the call to see, like, what we were dealing with the night previous, because we were trying to help him. Okay. And... That's where the claim of like, oh, Sin records his friends and just passes it around. Like, what a good friend he is, wink, wink. You know, that's when that shit came up yep. in the stream. It's like, like you bastards are just twisting everything now. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you putting out there as much as you can with it. So, because I, I knew there was more context to that. And I know Sin kind of got into it as much as he could. Um but I just wanted to kind of hear have people to hear it from like two sources of like, here's what happened. Yeah. And what didn't help was like, after we had the whole fucking fallout with Steve is that he's like going in on his like alt account on Twitter, the five to live one mm -hmm. and just taking shots at everybody like Redsky included, like saying KYS, KYS, KYS over and over and over again, Jesus. like actually trying to get him to commit. And then him taking shots at me and my sister and me being like a good brother. It's like, oh, you're a piece of shit. Your sister's dying or probably dead. I don't know. Shit like that. And I'm like, you really have no fucking life, do you? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's bored and he just wants to take fucking shots at everybody. And it's like, you already have enough shots in you. Why don't you go play in traffic? Yeah. <laughs> Well, there was a whole nother situation I, I couldn't recall fully, but there was something with uh, Steve where there was a stream and he was going to do something and he went to commit and he was like, oh yeah, I was drunk. And that might have been in tie-in with the held situation, if I remember right. Um, The held situation? It might have been. I can't recall. It, it, it's been so long since I did that interview that I'm not 100% sure on that one without watching everything over. I mean, I don't know if Steve was in like was in like with the group when held was around because i mean they'd have group calls talking about certain shit and weave wars because that's where they all met okay um i know one of the jokes that would go around is like when held got like super fucking um keyed up like he'd start slurring a speech um <laughs> when he got mad at someone telling a story it's like why didn't you go to the police? You know, like he almost started, like he almost ended up being IDB for a second. Like that's how bad they could get. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, no shade to hell, but I mean, like from the way how they were impersonating you, that's the only thing I could compare it to. <laughs> but that like became like another fucking in inside joke that they would repeat and calls like, why did you not call the police? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like <laughs> and then all the fucking tipster imitations too like my god there were so many <laughs> oh, bro would always do the most like rank ones where it's like he'd stick out <laughs> his tongue and he'd like talk with his tongue out like I'm sorry Colton 
<laughs> I can't even bring myself to do it. It's, just like... it's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's so ridiculous. And it's just like, you're thinking like, how the fuck? Like, we had all this kind of fun. And it was just like taking shots at other people, which, I mean, it happens in all groups. But at the same time, it's like, those were good times. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so. But, I mean, the whole shit. Uh, what were you going to say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say it's like it, it's like the whole thing is like same problems came up with Steve being drunk and then saying something he couldn't take back, which was like comparing Sin to Maya in that Twitter space. It's like that's that's when it all went downhill because like comparing Maya's age play shit that she's clearly into to this one time event with Sin in order to say that when Sin's calling Maya a pedophile, therefore that makes him one too. It's just like yeah, it, it just doesn't make any sense because Maya is clearly into the shit. Like she's had multiple instances. Hell, even one with Salvo. But this That's one right. instance That's with right. Sin. I remember that. Yeah, it's just this one instance with Sin being catfished and no other pieces of evidence, no like other instances. And then it's like, oh, you're just the same as Maya. And it's like, Maya is. It's like it isn't just because of like Maya being an age play that makes her a pedophile. It's also the shit that she said in those messages. Yeah. Like you know, can't repeat it here, but yeah, yeah, no, she said some pretty awful stuff because I remember seeing some of that stuff back when that occurred. Yeah, and then there's like the constant attempts to get minors to do OnlyFans, like she does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's there's it's a lot like... of a lot more suspect uh, behavior. In between yeah like you mentioned the salvo thing like I, I remember that now that you mentioned it with the whole um wanting to age play even in dms with salvo and then there was other stuff i remember back then where they were oh excuse me age playing and stuff like that um and like just weird weird stuff and like things that uh she had said about minors specifically that were just messed up like truly genuinely messed up like not not yeah, being and, moral, you know, nailing myself to the cross here, but they were like actually messed up statements. Yeah, but the thing was is like when Steve said that, it kind of hit like really really fucking hard on Sin's part. Yeah. Because um that. one of one of the jokes or like well not jokes, but one of the things that would like constantly be repeated when Steve did like uh, dumb shit when he yep. was drunk was like Drunk Steve is true Steve. <laughs> because, you know, a drunken mind speaks a sober truth. Um, yep. I guess he, because then, like, if he's using the excuse, like, I was drunk that night, Sin, I'm sorry. It's like, you just let out the whole ball game. You really think that Sin is just like Maya if yeah. he's going to compare him to, if he's going to, com like, say that she's a pedophile. Yeah. Like, I mean, if that's your rationale for the shit that Maya did, it's like, holy fuck, you have no right to judge. Yeah, really. You know, one thing I didn't have in the questions here that I kind of thought about that uh, I wanted to ask you about, and you may not know anything about this, but I've heard some lore that uh, Rev, uh, not Rev says Desu, uh, Rev, like, from around the community, got involved with the broadsword stuff uh, on Turd Island was also involved with the crows. Do you know anything about that? Um, yeah. Okay. Sin and Steve were friends with Rev, and uh, back in the day, they were kind of promoting his shit. Um, they'd have him on, and uh, Sin thought he had the potential to become a great content creator, which is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Like, even Sin admits now that this was, like, a dumb thing that he said back in the past. Because he completely misjudged Rev on being, like, you know, content creator potential. I don't know, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I just don't know what he saw back then, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, they, yeah, they were in good. It's just that when Steve and the Maya and the Danny shit all culminated, um, Danny, I, I believe she went at Rev the hardest. Okay. And then one of Steve's previous exes, I think it, Rev said it was Spoon, came to him and would, like, share disparate, like, bits of information about Steve in order to have fun and joke about. Steve didn't like it, said that there was, like, a, a Judas amongst us, 
and almost like created a fucking purge oh. um, amongst the friend group trying to find out who the leaker was. And then that's when all the stories about Rev, about him being in a Star Wars Discord server with miners <laughs> playing toys with little boys and all the other fucking like messed up limericks you could think of with the yeah. implications came about. And that's how like Rev got his reputation and how he would always be presented to like newcomers to the channel or to the friend group and whatnot. Okay, man. The, uh, just from an outside perspective, the crew is like really as much as you guys were a tight group, you guys cut each other's throats at the drop of a hat. It feels like, <laughs> well, I mean, especially the kind of jokes that we, <laughs> I should put this, but the kind of jokes that we were into, I mean, yeah, we could cut each other's throats, but at the same time, like, we could all, like, come back at the end of the day and know, like, we didn't mean any harm. It's just okay. that when we do intend to do harm, it ends up becoming, like, a fucking sideshow. <laughs> when it's actual Knives Out time, it, it becomes a full exhibit. Okay. Yeah, which everyone got a front row exhibit of. <laughs> and that also includes, like, franchise and technicals. Because okay. they are part of the group, too. Which surprised the heck out of me. Like, I had no idea about technicals being a part of that group. Um, franchise, I guess I didn't know enough about him to know whether he would or wouldn't be. I wasn't surprised when I found that information out through my digging. Um, what are well, your thoughts I mean, on like, some of these more orbiting people? Like like uh, technicals, like franchise, I guess now you got uh, even Triton to some extent. Where Triton? Crichton's a useful idiot. Let's just get that out of the first, out of the way first. Like, I mean, as far as him being an independent thinker, uh, that's not in the cards for him. Um, it, it's about all I can really say. It's like he's really easy to knock over in an argument. <laughs> you just you just need to like navigate whatever the fuck is wrong with him in his head, and I, I've had like success in doing that. Okay, but. I mean, that's all I could really say about the kid. I mean, other than like jokes whenever I'm looking at the stupid shitty posts and whatnot, but <laughs> if I'm being fair, it's like that's like my key observations about him. Okay. Now, what about like franchise and technical? So like I've heard franchises like technicals, like little little bro, like um Matt, think of it as like Doctor Evil and Mini Me. Yeah, yeah. It's like technicals is Doctor Evil and then <laughs> Fucking franchise is mini me. That's all it is at the end of the day. Okay. For their like dynamic and the friend group because, I mean they've they've got their own community which, the reason they got into contact with Crow I guess is because they had shared interests or just a shared enemy altogether. Okay. Um, given how it was like commentary war, twenty twenty two. Okay. Um, the thing that really irks me is like the amount of times technicals will lie the the recontextualizing of that server in which aura like openly admits is a gay op server okay i mean yeah it, it would be it would be classified as doxing especially like uh with the dove cult shit that's going on now yeah i mean people would classify that as doxing and therefore technicals is a doxer yeah and it's not like he didn't have the uh proper motivation to uh find katie's docs because apparently and this went overlooked um by a lot of people except for augie because ralph jr or not he is a bit quick-witted or he's got a sharp eye on him to notice like small details like um messages where they lit, pop up on a screen for like maybe a second or less and they were dms between technicals and zero and which zero was like basically urging him to find this person, find out their true identity and bring it to me. You know, <laughs> that always struck me. Okay. I, I might go off on a little bit of a tangent here with this. That whole situation always struck me as very weird because when I look at it from an outsider, okay, if it were me and I needed to figure out who somebody was on the internet, I would hire either a private investigator or go to a lawyer and see if we can get subpoena for records or something, even if I got to pay for it. And I mean, talking about the people we're talking about, they could pay for it. Nah, I he, just, uh, he just... I never understood that. That whole, like, we were going to make a server and try and figure out this person's, this kid's information. 
so that we can bring. Yeah, them and they end up. <laughs> yeah, they end up latching on someone else, and uh, apparently from preliminary ident- identifiers on on this person, that it would be another catfish situation. Yeah. Therefore, it would lean t- it would lean more credence to uh, this being a setup against Zero. But at the same time, it would also be the fucking you know wedge to get Sin on board. This is because whether Technicals wants to de- deny it or not. He probably more than likely did use that instance with Sin just to get him on board to not be an enemy, but just like a neutral third party at best. Yeah. And not a defender of Zero. Yeah. I just, I, I, I mean, from an outside perspective, that whole thing never totally made sense to me, but I, I can understand that though. Because, I mean, the lie that fucking Technicals tried getting away with when he decided to go against Sin after like the whole Nick and Tech comparison shit yep. went down on Twitter um, because for whatever reason we had to have that fucking war pop up again. <laughs> it, it just really shows how fucking petty some people can be. Yeah. Like, I mean, but at the same time, when you accurately characterize two fucking salty ass motherfuckers on the internet as being one in the same, just like just the fucking mirror universe kind of shit happening. <laughs> it, it just never ends well. He tried lying about not ever knowing anything about the shit. Saying he's like, why do you guys think I always investigate people I, I talk about? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't know. You're the one who's doing the whole detective motif there, technicals. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, he's pulling a fucking, uh, what's his name? A Deji. You know, it's like, I had no knowledge of any of this. This is so <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> like, you cannot pull that this late in the fucking game tech you are an arrogant fucking liar <laughs> he, he tried the whole john swan <laughs> no yeah. I, I was i was just hoping <laughs> no, no no it was like my autistic 13 year old cousin like yeah. he came in and used my computer he was the one in, in, in uh, like interpersonating uh dream yeah <laughs> 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 it's like I don't know the whole thing is just like it's such a fucking shit show but like the amount of people like turning ship and running and doing all this crap it's just like can any of you have like a fucking spine yeah yeah I, I it's just not in their favor it's not going to garner them any favor it's better this goes to a conversation that I had with a furry ironically <laughs> It's easier and uh, much more gratifying that instant gratification to sit there and point and say bad guy there than it is to say I messed up or I got this wrong or I need to change this. Like it's just it's that instant, you know, dopamine hit for lack of a better term. Yeah. And it's like a lot of the shit I did, I probably I have taken back and I have apologized to people for doing like after like that shit happened and I had a few days just thinking over mulling the shit. I went to people in DMs and apologized, like if I ever made you believe that the story was false or whatever, or made or gave you like any kind of motivation to take sense side in the why. I'm sorry, like yeah. I mean, I said that to like a, like a lot of people because they were pointing to me as being like sins attack dog. And the funny thing was, I wasn't just sins attack dog. I was crows. I was auras. I was Kayla's. I was Steve's. And I was also John's. Like, I was the group's attack dog. I wasn't just loyal to Sin. I was loyal to all. Yeah. Yeah, and I even... I I, I gained a lot of, like, insight into you when I saw your post that came out after that stream. I read through it. I actually read through it a couple times just, you know, to, like, really grasp it. But I thought it was just such a... I felt so bad for you in that instance because even without knowing your previous story that you kind of told here... Like, you could tell that, like, you were like, God damn, I fucked up because I was lied to, and, like, this shit's horrible, but holy shit, everybody here looks like an asshole. Yeah, and that's the thing, it's like, I even had people coming to me, like, after I made that post, um, again, or, like, pump the brakes, bro. I mean, <laughs> you're, good, you're a good person and all, but, I mean, just pump the fucking brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Or like would come to me with other people, like uh, what they were saying about me, like when they screenshotted my tweet and put it in theirs rather than quote tweet and direct, direct and traffic to it. Like, oh, look at this huge cope coming from Gigi Evans. And I'm like, 
like or like look they could say whatever the fuck they want about me they're a bunch of fucking idiots who don't know the truth <laughs> they think they know the truth, but that's just the, that, that's going to lead them into the same position I was now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just on the opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like history repeats itself, or it rhymes, whichever you yeah. know side of that argument you want to take. It all ends in fucking like misery if you don't listen to it. Yep. So one other orbiter that I kind of wanted to ask you about, and like you may or may not know a lot about this. But I'm sure you probably do from being around everybody, is the whole TJV thing. So from my understanding, TJV kind of was like uh, an enemy of the group initially, and then became a friend of the group, and then ultimately became one of the reasons, according to Crow, that all of this stuff got um, exposed again. The uh, the Crow just hates TJV <laughs> with a fiery passion because. Uh... Uh, Uncle Louie told him to. <laughs> That's all it is at the end of at the end of the day. Uncle Louie told him like Crow, TJ Man bad, go at him. <laughs> That's all it is, folks. Like <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, because I, I know he got a little tongue tied. Uh I, I don't know if you did you watch any of like Chthonic's the pit and all that where Crow was on trying to do his victory laps and TJV came on to try and like I feel like he was in a very similar situation to you trying to understand everything and of course he got it from Crow who was still being for lack of better word I feel like a little disingenuous at the time especially because he didn't like TJV did you get a chance to see any um, of that I'm the one that I sat down and watched was the Wall Smashers one, okay. um, where trying supposedly got a W and shit like that. I mean, <laughs> good luck without having your gro- ghost riders next time there, buddy boy. Um, the whole thing uh, with Chthonics, I had it on in the background, but I caught it like halfway through. So I didn't like see the first half where it was just TJV and Chthonic. Or was it Crow and Chthonic? It, so it was uh, TJV and Chthonic initially, then Crow comes on, and uh, it, it got into a bit of an interesting situation, because TJV had to leave for a little bit and then come back. And uh, ironically yeah. enough, there's a portion in there where you bring up uh, Louis, uh, where he's uh, Crow mentions, oh, didn't you get two cease and desist from Louis? And TJV goes, I, I yeah, that shit. One. Yeah, like it was kind of interesting because nah, you could tell, like, Crow still goes to bat for this guy for what reason. I don't know, but I mean, the whole thing is like the cease and desist. Um, Crow knows about uh, TJV getting like two cease and desist by uh, not Louie, but um, what's his name? Delirious. Okay. Because I have. For whatever reason, during the whole Scott situation, Delirious thought, I was like, oh, this is the perfect time. Get my lawyers involved with this, even though I'm, like, fighting three legal battles at the same time. <laughs> like, what? But, um, yeah, he sent TJV to cease and desist. The threatening to sue uh, was all on, um, like, an Uncle Louie. Okay. And that, Crow was um, Crow... involved with that, too, wasn't he? Well, that's the thing. Uh, the reason why it was such a fuck up for Crow is because me and Sin were able to put two and two together on that one fairly easily, because it just shows that Crow was in contact with Delirious, um, was also in contact with John, who was in contact with Delirious, and there was just like a bunch of lying going around. So it, it's just, I don't, know, it's real slimeball behavior, like from what I saw, what they were doing to TJ, because at the end of the day. TJ didn't deserve to get fucking hit like he did. Yeah. If if anything, TJ was a bit too opportun. I don't want to say opportunistic, but he was too optimistic with taking opportunities. Okay. It's like, oh no, if I cover this, it'll be fine because I'm doing it all in the right way. So let's continue doing it. <laughs> and then he wouldn't like you know get enemies yeah. based off of it. Yeah. Is what I mean. Especially ones that have like you know fuck you money and can fire up legal threats like uh, you <laughs> know a, turning the key on an ignition. Even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. D- uh, speaking because of... I go ahead. I apologize. I mean, as far as as far as TJV, it's like my read on him is that he does try to do things in earnest. He tries to keep it above board. It's just that when he gets hooked on a story, he kind of does 
uh, milk it for better or for worse. Okay. Um, I just realized we hadn't talked about franchise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, Nick. Uh, as that's far as. <laughs> well, what, what was the question then? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, did, uh, speaking of shows, did you see uh, the inter- the interview that franchise had with Mr. Sand? I put interview in air quotes. Uh, and did you have any thoughts on that? This would have been back with uh, franchise doing his 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 i'm gonna his... be honest shittier version of the exposed thing that the crows ended up doing what was it, in february well i mean the, just to give like a uh, fucking franchise a little bit of help in the showmanship department if you're going to put on a donkey show it'd really help if you weren't just the only jackass there um <laughs> uh the whole thing with franchises like we were actually pretty chill with the dude until he started like meddling in affairs that had nothing to do with him okay like what started out with him wasn't just like oh he's like friends with technicals and then the shit like we're we're radio silent with technicals after the commentary war and shit like that no 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 no. this started when we were like being friendly with him and like helping him out with his like uh, Edwin video, where we were trying to get a, a bunch of different uh, sources for him, uh, okay. memes, stuff that stuff that he can use to better argue his points against Edwin. Okay. And we were we were in full support of him when he was going up to debate him, and he turned out to be a complete nutter greenhorn. <laughs> I mean, when he came back, we weren't like shitting on him or anything. We were like, dude, you tried your best. Better luck next time. Here's yeah. what you need to look out for. Shit like that. Yeah. And then, like, after a certain period of time, he started doing some kind of antics, looking for another story. Um, This one had to deal with Slug, like all good stories do. (laughs) 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 Um, Because it had to deal with a situation where this one chick, and this ties in with the Craig Beckett victim, Emmy. Okay, um, yep. Being a little snitch, uh, I guess you could say, on Spider Centaur for basically putting out messages between herself and Slug in which they were e-dating. Okay. And one of them happened to contain nudes in, like, the spoiler form or something of Slug. Okay. And Slug was threatening to press charges against her for revenge porn. And it basically put Spider into a fucking tizzy. Um, the problem was is that we had already settled it, settled the beef between the two, and Spider and Slug became friends afterwards again. Okay. Like, they weren't going at each other's throats. And this is, like, I want to say three or four months down the line, maybe five, and Franchise is sticking his nose into it. It's like, look, it's already settled. What the fuck are you looking for here? <laughs> and apparently... He wanted to have a go at Sluggo. <laughs> and it's not like it wouldn't be the first time he's called Slug a pedophile or insinuated because there's a picture where it's <laughs> a kid chasing after a school bus and it has Slug's head superimposed on it. And uh, it's like, bus driver? It's like, that dude stole my ch- stole my girlfriend. And it's like, it's, it's quite literally elementary school kids. And it's oh just like God. fucking pimply face slug. <laughs> oh my god. It's like bus driver, my dude, he's still, he kidnapped my girlfriend and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> as funny of a fucking joke as it is, it's based on the spider situation. Okay. Now, what franchise is trying to do, he was trying to doll up the story because for whatever reason, Redsky, who wasn't a primary source for the story, or well, it was a secondary source for his story or his understanding of it. Okay. But it wasn't like a primary source like me, Sin, Dev, and Spider. Uh, us four were the only ones in a group chat talking about the situation, trying to get her to calm down. Okay. And then like negotiating the peace deal and everything. Yeah. He didn't come to any of us. He went to Redsky, and Redsky, for whatever reason, put it into his head that. Uh, from either a false memory or just like trying to take a guess as to what happened, put it into franchise's head that Spider was suicidal because of it. Okay. And that's when he started digging. 
and started trying to message Spider like crazy because he wanted that dirt on Slug. So we made fun of him for it because it was just like, dude, we told you a thousand times, knock it off. Yeah. But he didn't. He just wanted to go at Slug. And it's like, and that's when like Aura was also like sharing screenshots with him and Steve was getting involved too. And it just like, it's like, okay, so Steve is involved and we're, we're at war with Steve. So the franchise has already picked his side on this issue. He's just not telling us. <laughs> <laughs> so it ends up becoming like this fucking little infiltration game where he tries to get more information and we make fun of him for it. <laughs> I mean, and that that's that's what spurred on that fucking little stream of his where he's like, I'm the big tough guy now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's because of that. Because you cannot argue from a timetable of those events happening within months of each other. Like not just months, but a month. Yeah. In which like no- nothing else happened and that was like the only big event that forced him to go this far. Oh my. God. Yeah, so <laughs> franchise whatever his fucking cope was for it. I mean, his the tumor in his eyebrow got like three sizes bigger that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's just a. If anything, he's a technicals mini me or wannabe, and that's all it really is at the end of the day. Okay. Oh man. So I'm down to like the last four questions here, and these are kind of more general questions, but uh, kind of based on everything we talked about with the lollycon stuff. I mean, we kind of went through some of the the leak stuff and the send story. Um, before and after even, um, do you feel in any way, shape or form that Sen is a lollycon or a pedophile? No, because every time when I would bring up a lollycon story about shit that would happen and I'd post it and if it had like anything graphing on it, he's like, delete that shit right now because he had a zero tolerance policy for that shit in the server. Okay. I mean... I could give you three different examples of people we had to kick for that shit. Oh, and one of them was like one of, uh, was kind of like a close online individual with sin online that okay. he knew for like a few years. Okay. Like even before like the original story broke. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if sin was into it, he would have allowed it in the server or at least would have created a secret thing. And, Here's the thing, I would know what that secret thing is because I was his admin in the server up until this uh, new rendition of the ser- of the story. Okay. And not once was a channel ever created for NSFW shit like that. Okay. Sure. That's something I really hadn't talked with Sen about is, you know, any any situations like that that had or ever came up. But um yeah, I would know because I'd be the one handling it. <laughs> I'd have I'd have to give him the after action report. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So uh okay, so one of the things that like really kind of interested me with Mr. Sen goes back to um his interview with like uh Shud Logic and all that. And he really did a strong uh argument in my opinion pointing out hypocrisy within commentary do you feel that there's a lot of hypocrisy um within commentary in regards to similar similar situations uh like mr Sen? similar situations yeah um like lyrics um i guess you could see even like tipster and all that um i definitely well, i mean Flamenco, i mean yeah i'd say there is a double standard um why would Diorio keep lyrics around if he was getting rid of Flamenco for the Lolly shit? I mean, I guess one of them has to be more annoying than the other for him to keep the other around. <laughs> would be his would be his justification, but at, on service level, it looks like you're trading up one Lollycon for another. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd say there is a hypocrisy to it, especially if you're going to use him for as like a, a satellite warrior to fight your battles, like you did with uh, uh, what's his name, Michael Alberto. Yep. When he was standing up for tech, it's just like it's fucking ridiculous. Having your little satellite wars is just like it's so fucking cringe. <laughs> like, look, if you guys want to duke it out, go fight in a boxing ring. Yeah, I mean, you think the like think about it. Like, 
heavyweight Diorio versus featherweight fucking technicals. Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> it ain't gonna be tech. <laughs> oh man. That would be a funny fight to watch. Because <laughs> the technicals are um, big enough to run around the ring. <laughs> yeah, I mean the whole thing is like hypocrisy in general does happen. I mean, I know they say we always made fun of tipster. Yeah, in private, you joke softly about them in public. Yeah, didn't go full ham like you're doing right now. Yeah. I mean, when I was doing it, you guys were saying like, oh, what's your obsession with tipster GG and shit like that? I'm like, <laughs> it's right there. Motherfuckers <laughs> defending this shit. And you're like, oh my God, tipster. Wow, you're defending it now. Oh my God, my brain's blown. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> It, oh, it, yeah it is hypocrisy it's fucking stupid it, <laughs> anyone who says otherwise is either willfully blind or got blinded by the light <laughs> of like Augie and Diorio being the top of the sector and shit <laughs> oh man um, so kind of going along the same terms uh, do you feel like people abuse terms like lolicon and pedophile to the point that they're kind of devaluing the words impact Honestly, I'd say people throwing it around willy-nilly, whether if it's just, like, to get someone to get off your back, like, call them a pedophile, therefore you put them on the back foot. Yeah. Um, I think that does devalue it. As far as jokes, no. Um, false accusations, definitely. Okay. Well, I think it... Or false... In terms or of, false like, inter looking at, like, Rev and Darcy situation recently um yeah. oh, false uh, interpretations at that point yeah i'd say okay there's false allegations and there's false interpretations of the allegations yeah because i know they they call uh sen a pedophile for stuff and in no way shape or form was he ever a pedophile at any of that discussion um i mean just put it like this it's like calling um oh i don't know terrorists in movies like uh, child killers even though they have the fucking explicit warning on the screens like no actual children were harmed in the making of this movie <laughs> like that that's the only way how i could look at the two fucking positions with sin and like rev yeah oh man and then um i guess my last question would be do you have any other thoughts or feelings that you'd like to share? Maybe any topics i've missed or any other people that you think are worth bringing up in this situation? Okay, I'm back. Uh, what was the question again? No problem. Um, just do you have any other thoughts or feelings um, that you wanted out there, or do you feel like I, I missed any strong or any like real points with this, or is there any other people that you think are worth mentioning with all of this situation with Mr. Seth? Mm, I'd say the commentary community is a fickle bunch. Uh, anyone who's like strong willed or strong headed should probably stay clear of it. Otherwise, you're just gonna get fucking buried. I mean, that's one bit of advice. Okay. Um, charitability, as Crow puts it, or the way how he frames it, is not charitability in the sense of, you know, a good-hearted in interpretation. It's conditional. Okay. Um, that That's the one thing I hated about Crow and how he put it at most is, like, charitability. And the way how he's, like, explaining it is that it's conditional, which is not charitability. Yeah, no. Charitability would be like giving them, uh, believing someone, no questions asked, or like giving to someone, no strings attached. Yeah. It's like his form of charitability is like, is very dubious. And <laughs> honestly, it's just like, if you're going to take anything that he says seriously, especially like how he recontextualizes some of the shit in the logs, like, the quote unquote pictures that uh, Jared had sent him uh, where uh, Jared had quote unquote admitted that all he had to do was just look up teenager and shit. Yeah. Um, I've seen those pictures. They're PG and they're all the same person. There's no way how he Google searched them. They came from a Facebook account. Hmm. So, you know, lie number 3000 for crows of judgment right there. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say even between my sense stream and now I've gone through and saw the uncensored version of the concert of the whole conversation. And mm -hmm. I can say without a doubt, honestly, Sen just comes off like a, a horny teenager. Like <laughs> I'm just going to say that outright. 
Um, yeah, but and the funny thing is, is like it only happened one time, and Sin wasn't the one who instigated it. No, no, and like I even tried to make sure that like I understood how the copy paste and all that can work, because people are like, "Oh, he saved it. He saved it." And I'm like, yeah, well, that's how that that's how it used to work. Except it's just like now you can copy and paste. Back in the day, you had to save the file then re-upload it. I just don't think Sin kept the file. No, like I, I think he was just trying to like get somewhere lusty or like I hate to say it, maybe the dude was jerking off and he was just like trying to instigate it to completion. If you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but it's like here's the thing: it's Jared also on that like freaking uh, Twitter account where he had like other pictures, like naked pictures yeah. of the women he was impersonating as. Um, why would sin? have to be into Lolly if they were like putting up naked pictures of teenagers as Crow says. Like I mean I it's just like it, the charitability is, argument again plays into this. It's just Crow doing sin dirty for Lady John's behalf yeah. at the end of the day. And it's like real charitability. And again, I'm not saying that the first stream when this shit was addressed was real charitability because now that I've seen Crow in action, like when he's going against his friends, including me, someone who did fuck all to him. Yeah. Um, it, it makes me think that the only reason why he gave Sin like charitability is because Sin apologized for saying the, yeah. the saying N word. <laughs> I think that's I think that's all he I think that's all he wanted for Sin to do. Yeah. And he had the perfect ammo to get that apology out of him at that time. Then afterwards, when Sin was more malleable and more amenable, yeah, because he was in a fucking fit, uh, pit, that's when they got him roped into their side. I think that's how it played out at the end of the day. I mean, no one there really likes Sin in the first place, outside of maybe Kayla and Aura partially. Okay, but it's it is what it is. I just don't think the whole charitability uh, reasoning that Crow's using. It makes any fucking sense. So one last, uh, as last far... question for you, and you might find this a bit funny. Um, oh, and I interrupt you. I apologize. Uh, I was going to say, it's like, as far as charitability goes, like, I know how much I've given Crow and, like, the other members of the Crows of Judgment over the years. And uh, if you want to talk about charitability, just look at all the Super Chats I gave you. That's actual charitability. Not to mention, like, signing up. Oh, this is another thing I was wanting to mention. I think Crow might have actually scammed a lot of people on Patreon at the end of it. Really? Yeah, because he had this, like, comic book idea in which uh, he was going to have an artist. I think I, I think it was um, Magical Porpoise or, you know. Okay. Um, I forget what her name is, but Cat the Artist, Cat the Cat. Yep. Um, she was going to do the art. Crow was going to pay for it, and uh, everyone signed up. And th this is like a funny aside. He ended up doxing all of our email addresses on a stream uh, just by showing a screen. And I had to go behind the scenes, and I'm like, dude, you need to blur that shit out. <laughs> I, like, I mean, looking out, you know. Yeah. Luckily, I had luckily I had like an alternate email for myself. I don't know how much for other people, but. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's like fifteen dollars a month on Patreon for this comic book, and nothing ever like came of it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> and the funny thing was, like, I was still getting charged and not getting much in the way of updates. So he could have just been pocketing all that money too. I mean, yeah. if anyone's watching this from the Crows of Judgment, you know, just to hate on me, be sure to check your like Patreon account, see if they're still like bilking funds from you to go to Crow. And, like, see why the fuck he hasn't updated anything on his fucking comic book, like he said. So he's pulling a little bit of a veto situation, huh? Yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly what Vito was doing, but if you if it lines up in your head, I'd say, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there was the whole situation that went on with um, Dick, kind of tangentially, but more so probably Vito and uh, Eric July. And they had a big problem with Eric July and his uh, Isom comic. And uh, it got to a point where, like, Vito's like, well, I'm going to do a comic just to show you up. And from what I understand, the comic still has not come out. Oh, uh, yeah. It involves, like, Superman and Sailor Moon, apparently. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, paging Christian, you cannot use Sonic or Pikachu for that matter in your works. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, like the idea that Crow had seemed like pretty cool. It was like zombie troopers of some sort. Okay. All right. Yeah, it actually had a pretty good premise from what he was telling all of us on that stream. Kind of, kind of. It just like never came to fruition. Thing. Yeah. Okay. I so my last question, um, and this is probably going to be funny to you at least. It, it was to me, and I never, I don't feel like I got a great answer out of Sen, and you might not know either. Um, other than you know, he just does it to hurt his feelings. What is with Sen going after Crow's wife? Um, Let's see here. That's how Crow got his start in the first place, because people went after his wife, and I think it was Yellow Flash who reached out to him, and that's how he got like his first 9,000 subs on his first channel. Okay. Crows of Judgment. Because Dean's friends, for whatever reason, decided to come up with a rap song calling her a gorilla. Yeah, okay. And given how, like, uh, Sin had, it felt like I guess because of how Crow went at Sin with that stream and then he started like going at Crow's wife. It's like it's because Sin had to defend like Jasmine a few times against Dean and all the others and had to pretend, you know, certain shit didn't happen a certain way. I, I think it's just, you know, like, look, if this is all about charitability, then fuck your wife, too. She is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's what it is at the end of the day. It's like tit for tat. Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as Jasmine goes, like, all my interactions with her have been nice, and I'm not going to bring her into, like, any shit that I have against Crow. Okay. Uh, it's just that. <laughs> it's like, I, I think I might know the real reason why Sen just went like he did. But okay. I don't know. He he might disagree, but... That makes a little more sense. Uh, that's like, how... I, I know he was saying that basically he did it just because he knows that it, it hurts him. And, like, it's so easy. And a couple other things that he said, but... Yeah, Sin really doesn't like to show weakness that much. No, no, I could tell that. I mean, here, here's the thing. It's like, when he would joke about me on his streams, like, um, uh, like when we'd have a call before one of his streams, like, uh, he would treat me as, like, if I was his personal priest and say that he came out of confessional with me or something. <laughs> Like he confessed to all of his sins to me, and it's like I tell him, okay, now do a two-hour stream on such and such bullshit, and you're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> no Hail Marys, no Orphans. <laughs> yeah, it's like we we have jokes like that all the time. It's just <laughs> it used to be with the whole crew, but now fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I don't know if you want to put this in or if you've stopped recording, but. <laughs> Like, the whole thing was sense, like, the funny thing was, I did kind of have a bit of a falling out with him um, a week and a half prior to this fucking horseshit even airing. Really? Yeah, and it was, like, completely one-sided, and it's it has to deal with the IRL shit. Okay. Um, Like, having to deal with my sister and everything, apparently, uh, it caused me to have PTSD. Okay. And I ended up having an episode where I was just like so fucking angry after waking up. I kind of just cut everybody off. All right. And me and Sin became very confrontational about it. But it's just like four years of being woken up at like three in the morning, two in the morning. And it's like emergency, emergency, sister crying and just being yeah. a freaking paramedic. Yeah. But I'm not built like that yeah. <laughs> or don't have the training. <laughs> Yeah. It's just like, it, it, it does like fucking wear down on me. But at the same time, when I'm hanging out with them, it was like, you know, it was, there, it was right almost there. therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> well, I think that's everything. I greatly, greatly appreciate you sitting down with me. Um, if you're sitting down, if you're standing up, then for standing up with me. Um <laughs> 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 and... I'm just hanging here for my arms. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> but yeah, I know, I know you've got a busy schedule, but I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me about this because I know you got a little more probably intimate side of, uh, like some of the behind the scenes stuff between 
the crows sin and all that. Like, I know you were there for at least a good portion of it. So it, it helps. I think it'll help people kind of get an insight to maybe some of the background information that if anybody cares to hear, now they can hear it. Um, if they, yeah. if they're still going to continue with the narratives that they want to continue with, they're, they're going to do it no matter what. So, but I figure at least having the information out there helps. I mean, uh, if it does, like, I'm pretty sure some of the shit I've said, even though it's true, it will be like probably inflaming enough to some of the members of the group <laughs> to might want to reach out and try to retaliate or maybe even do the interview. So, yeah. We'll see. I, I mean, I, I know. maybe Crow, maybe Crow, most of all, because I think he wouldn't like it if uh, if, <laughs> if he was like caught like reading like fucking scripts of episodes involving Hitler and shit like that and having a good laugh. <laughs> if it was put, if it was put in that in those certain words. <laughs> yeah, that or or even some of the Patreon stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like. It's like, <laughs> welcome to Crows of Judgment. We're here with...